There we are. Hey. I see us now. There we are. Who? <laughs> I'm watching the replay. That's perfect. <laughs> Oh, welcome to Talking Heads, everyone. Episode 153, your once-weekly live show for the latest in beer and tech news. I'm Jeff. I'm Steve. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us on this Wednesday night. If you've never seen the show before, we talk beer, we talk tech, we talk games, pop culture, entertainment, usually a little Wait, Star Trek. Did you say pop culture because you're petting the dog? Pop culture, pup, yes. Pop culture, yes. Pop culture. Pop culture. Pop culture. <laughs> yeah. How can you see him? He's camouflage. Yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> is, that a, is that a new mink fur coat you got on there? Yeah. <laughs> Don't wear furts. <laughs> uh, we talk uh, tech, we talk beer, we talk games, pop culture, entertainment, usually some Star Trek sprinkled in there. Yep. How could you have guessed? Mm -hmm. uh, we do drink alcohol on the show, but always strive to be family friendly in both language and content. If you're drinking anything on the show or while you're watching, you're not on the show, we're on the show. If you're drinking along with us, alcoholic or not, let us know in the chat and we'll give some early show shout outs here. All super chats are read on the air so long as they meet our family friendly criteria. And if you want to take part in the super secret chat behind the scenes and take part in the after party, in on camera with myself and Steve and usually John and sometimes Rhett, uh, consider joining the Patreon. Link is down in the video description. Minimum contribution of $1 gets you access to the Discord server where you can chat with all of us and uh, become part of the ever-growing awesome community over there. Also, if you don't have time to watch the show tonight, make sure to catch us on Anchor FM or wherever your favorite podcasts are found. Well, I, I, got, I, I like my podcasts. I get them from pod, pod people? I don't pod know. People? Pod people? I don't think we're on that one. No. Oh, well. Funk, make, make sure I'm on pod people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on like 20 platforms. It's really weird. Uh, how's it going, everyone? Yes, Coke uh, Zero does count. So yes. I just said Coke Zero. Yeah. Cider, yeah. hot nutter. Coke, Coke Zero definitely counts. Yeah. Drinking some hard cider. We just uh, finished making our own hard cider, actually. Oh, nice. Yeah, it yeah. is about that time of year, isn't yep. it? Yep, yep. I got five gallons. It's just about done fermenting. Nice. And uh, I'll probably throw some, like, apple, pineapple, maybe some, I don't know. I'm thinking pineapple. I think pineapple apple is going to be good. So you guys were wondering last week why I usually don't have Zeke on the show. This is why it's hard to have him on the show. <laughs> <laughs> because he gets as close as he possibly can, and he's cute as a button. But he has to be touching you, like every available surface. It's about surface area, not about mass. Um, so he's fun. He's a he's a great puppy. As long as you can keep him out of your face. Yes. All right. Uh, I hope he doesn't start drinking your beer either. Right. Yeah. I feel like it's been forever since I've seen you, Steve, because it has been. It's it's been well. I mean. We saw each other uh, about a month ago when the fires were going on. Yeah. That was just on camera, though, but not... Um, in person, it's been... Not in person, yeah. 4th of July? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah. Like 4th of July. That's been a long time. Yeah. Ooh, John Jay's got some uh, uh, Stone Fear movie lines. Oh, and Jameson. Excellent. And Jameson. Oh, nice. Bourbon oh. Barrel Iced Cider. Minnesota Harvest. That sounds pretty good. Iced Cider, good. yeah. Yeah, I've I've had some uh, some Norwegian ice cider before. That was yeah, freaking fantastic. Um, and I got that on my own. I didn't have to rely on Norwegian contacts to get that. Oh, one. <laughs> <laughs> get your own Norwegian contact. That's right. Uh, what are you drinking out over there? Well, I I haven't started, but I got I got uh, I went with um, uh, some twelve ounce cans instead of any of the normal sixteen ounce cans. I find that at the end of the show, I have to run to the bathroom. <laughs> Steve, right away, because uh, yes, okay, you too, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, same I exact have. Thing. Uh, let's see. I should probably take the price tag out of this so I can read it. Beechwood uh, Mocha Machine. So it's an Imperial Coffee Chocolate Porter. So that'd be hopefully good. Uh, and I have. Hop Valley Bubble Stash, which is nice, Ooh, nice. standard I like IPA. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I just saw it in there, and it's like, that's uh, the only non-giant big IPA that I had that wasn't a 16-ounce can. All the good IPAs come in 16-ounce cans now. Yeah. 
and I like I I can't I can't drink of this. Right. And I got uh, from I, I, I like IPAs, but not I do too. Not all the time do I yeah. want a full pint nine yes. and a half percent. Yes, it's exactly. Like sometimes I just want a twelver. And that's all I have, except right. for the bubble stash. So that's why I grabbed the bubble stash. Yeah, a, a lot of my beers right now are in bombers because I'm not sharing them with people. I yeah. usually crack a bomber, a bomber and share it with a friend when they come over. Yes, that's what and I do too. so I'm running out of cans, but I've got a fridge full of bombers. <laughs> yeah, we just actually, I just got back from Denver. Uh, my brother mm -hmm. lives out in Denver. Another brother, not John, yeah. obviously. Uh, my and other brother, John. My other brother, John, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and we went to uh, just, I'd like, I think we hit 10 breweries. And because like Denver is like Portland, right? There's just breweries everywhere. Yeah. And um, so I was like looking for unique stuff to get um, stuff that they don't distribute because they have like, you know, great divides over there. Uh, and uh, uh, Epic is over there and stuff like yeah. that. And they distribute all over the place. And so I went to those places, but I was disappointed because all the stuff that they offered with stuff I can get over here. So I'm like, oh, what, what, what am I yeah. doing here? I um, hate going to like, you know, oh, well, while you're in town, you got to go to this great tap house and you go there and it's 80% of stuff you can get locally. Anyway. Yeah, it's I like, know. It's like, I don't, I don't want that. So we tried going to like places I've never heard of before. Um, yeah. And of course there's just a big risk because some of them might be good. Some of them might not be good. And it was, it was a big mixed bag. Yeah. Um, but there was a few good ones there, and they, and they, they usually will do either crawlers or, um, you know, the big tall ones, the, the, the 16 ounces. Yeah. They hardly ever do 12 uh, ounce cans. So most of the stuff I brought back from Colorado, I didn't want to pick either because <laughs> they were just giant amounts of liquid that I'm just not going to try drinking all by myself. Right. So I think I'm going to start out with, uh, the Mazama brewing Hefeweizen, Ooh. which I've actually had before. And it's actually really good Hefeweizen. Nice. Yeah, I'm opening up a Kansas City Craft Brewers Old World Pilsner. Oh, okay, so light one. Yeah. We're both starting out light. Yeah, I, I got three light ones today. Okay, good. So. Yeah, this this is like a traditional Hefeweizen, not like a Widmere Hefeweizen, not like yeah. weedy or, or anything like that. This one tastes like those banana esters are in there. Right. Kind of malty and sweet. A little bit of hop, not too much. It's very good stuff. This is like a lemony pilsner. Really? That sounds good. It smells kind of good. Yeah. Mm. Zeke, you can't do that. <laughs> Zeke's going to smell the beer and I, drink it. No, I, I spilled a little. Um, so those, some people may not know this, but um, Zeke, uh, a day after we found him, made his first appearance on our show because someone abandoned him on our doorstep. Um, so we did Talking Heads, I think, with Rhett. Um, yeah. and, uh, and he was on the show and for the next couple of weeks, he did exactly this. He sat in my lap for, uh, for quite a few weeks in a row, uh, while he was warming up to us and whatnot. And, uh, at one point, uh, we opened, John and I opened some beers and I'm sitting there, they're just sitting like this and Zeke is on camera licking the, the beer that's dripping down my glass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's when he was a puppy puppy, like just yeah, little, he, little, little yeah, baby he, Zeke. Yeah, uh, we got him on our doorstep when he was six weeks old. So, yeah. Oh, so yeah, somebody's got the Yungling Hershey's Porter. For a Pilsner? No, no, yeah. no. Greybeard Tech got the yeah, Yungling Hershey's yeah, Porter. Yeah, Gray, Greybeard Tech has uh, has that. I'm saying this for a Pilsner? Oh, for a Pilsner. Oh, you're making comments on your beer. Okay, right, sorry. I'm, yeah, I'm talking about my beer yeah. now. Okay, you know, sorry. The, the hell with <laughs> Yunglings. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, send me one. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, for a Pilsner, this has a depth. It's got flavor. It's really? got like, it's got more than one flavor. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's evolving. It's weird. That's, that's a lot of Pilsners, like craft Pilsners are usually pretty good um, for the most part. I mean, it's still not my favorite style, but right. they're way more flavorful than your domestic Coors and Bud and everything like that. I like that. Um, like I said, it's, it's got kind of a lemony um lemony sweetness i want to say mm, um, on the nose and uh it's not bready at all it's not yeah. not biscuit flavored it's not yeah you know i'm, I'm not eating flatbread in, in liquid form oh that was the thing i didn't like about <laughs> denver a lot of the breweries because like um you know uh new belgian is over there and new Belgian's popular and new belgian uses that biscuity malt type stuff i just i don't like that yeah. flavor that much in my beer and a lot of the breweries over there use that and so I'm just like, uh, 
I'm not into it. Right. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get uh, into the news, shall we? Get some news going, yeah. Uh, starting with, click on the right tab there. There you go. Uh, we all try to accessorize and outfit our computers in every way, shape, and form. Um, whether it's higher end parts, if you can order a graphics card, mm -hmm. whether it's, you know, RGB everything, whether it's, you know, just the right keyboard, just the right monitor. Um, well, Razer is expanding into a new line of accessorization and uh, customization, uh, which you can use to buy all your customized PC peripherals. Uh, they are bringing RGB to the credit card. Yeah. <laughs> this is not an April Fool's gag. This is real life. There is an LED <laughs> embedded in the Razer credit card. Which, I mean, to be fair, is kind of cool. This is a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of cool. I'm not going to lie. Um, <laughs> Although, does it like constantly glow or is there like... I think a, it a way may, to turn it off. I think or? it may glow when you put the chip in. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, because if it if it doesn't glow, well, because it also says that that because credit cards are are quickly kind of becoming obsolete because everybody has the swipe pay on their phone. Um, I use that as much as I can. Actually, I yeah. find it way more convenient. Mm -hmm. um, so it also said that this card is supposed to support that. So I'm wondering if when you swipe it, it does the same thing too. If you just hover over it and it, and it experiences a, a, a near field communication that it lights up maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Cause uh, yeah, they've proven um, in fact, uh, Scotty from uh, strange parts, he did mm -hmm. a, a video on wireless LEDs uh, mm -hmm. using, um, using short, short wave, uh, you know, NFC contact essentially mm -hmm. to, and, uh, wireless charging hmm. to, to to power up leds and, so, uh, so so if the battery runs out in this thing it could be a wireless charger and you can just set it on your wireless charger <laughs> charge your credit card back up Char charge your led back up charge your so led you, not not the not the balance obviously so you, so you can impress the ladies with that <laughs> <Yeah>. bling <laughs> or or are, you, are they are razors charges you for charging the battery so you get you know five cents Zeke. a kilowatt Zeke. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, not up the nose, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he smells uh, the beer on your breath. Yeah. He does like the smell of beer. I do not give my dog beer. I want to make that perfectly mm -hmm. well known. Um, uh, the most he's ever gotten was probably what he just got because I spilled a couple drops on my desk. And as soon as they hit the desk, he went and licked them up. Oh, yeah. And but, now he uh, wants more. Yeah. You've, uh, you've uh, successfully turned your dog into an alcoholic. Yeah. Good job. No, what's, what's really funny <laughs> is uh, if I don't, it, you notice I'm constantly petting him. Yeah. Okay. Um, he gets anxiety from you looking at him. Oh, poor uh, doggy. And uh, yeah, he's he's a, a nervous wreck most of the time. Yeah. Um, but, is, he, uh, is he part chihuahua? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it makes he's, sense if he was. He's, he's definitely a mutt. I mean, yeah. he's, a, he's a decently sized dog. He's yeah. right around 20 pounds. Um, we've met, but, uh, so yeah, I know. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I was telling them cause they don't know. <laughs> Jeez. It's not all about you, Stephen. <laughs> it's not. Oh. Um, but, uh, no, if I stop petting him, um, he will try to pet me. Oh, really? Um, and, uh, yeah. So if I, if I do this, he'll either start licking me to death or mm -hmm. he'll start, uh, putting his paws up on me and he'll actually pet me. Mm -hmm. To go like, dude, I wasn't done yet. Yeah, come back. Finish <laughs> right. what you started. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, yeah. There's Yeah, that's right. As, you should ask John if he has any more of that dog beer. Yeah. You can give some to Zeke. Oh, he would, he would eat Probably that. Probably like that. Oh, yeah. Well, drink it up, brother. I, I, I was not there with John when he, he tried to experience that stuff, thank God, because I <laughs> didn't want to drink that stuff. It looked gross. <laughs> has he tried making ramen with it yet? Uh, it might make it considerably taste better, actually. <laughs> Ooh, chicken. <laughs> nom, nom. I kind of imagine that's kind of what that dog beer tastes like. It's probably just like top ramen broth with like a little more putridity to it or something. Right. Well, he, he goes, there was like an oily finish to it as well. well probably, yeah, you know. There's probably some fish oil in there because that's yeah. usually good for dogs' coats yeah. and things like that. Yeah. 
Heavy petting tonight on Talking Heads. Yes. <laughs> Considerable heavy petting. heavy petting. Yes. Yeah. Um, all right. Moving right along from yep. heavy petting. Uh, oh, yeah. Family-friendly show. Uh, <sighs> Samsung uh, says the first rollable smartphone will debut in 2021 following the success of their foldable handsets. I guess... Yeah. I guess they have one model that's a success, and they call it a success. Yes, I know it's going to put success in quotes there, because right. I don't know if it was really a success. I don't know of many techs that got off to a rockier start yeah. than Samsung's foldable screens. I, I, I'm still dubious on the foldable screens, too. Um, yeah. I could probably get behind the rollable screen more than I would the foldable screen. Yeah. Because I don't, uh, I think there would be less. Oh, there's no, there gonna be less creasing, I would suspect. But right, I still don't know why I need a foldable phone or a rollable phone. There, there hasn't been any convincing use cases in software. Yeah, that proved to me that the form factor makes sense. Uh, um, I understand that probably it's only going to be used for like, ah, I'm watching a movie on this thing. I want a bigger screen. That's it. Uh, right. The My biggest thing at the moment is they're twice as thick though. And well, that's the thing. Yeah. The rollable <laughs> ones I think are not supposed to be as thick than the fold. The foldable ones are definitely right. But the rollable ones are not, they're obviously not as thin as, as you know, your flagship right. Samsung galaxies and, and your yeah. apples and stuff like that. But let, because... let me just say that after paring down, and uh, by the way, this is not a sponsored spot, but mm -hmm. after paring down to the Ridge Wallet after they decided to sponsor the channel, mm -hmm. so previously sponsored spot, this spot is not sponsored by Ridge Wallet, although you can still go to, uh, to ridge.com slash craft to get 10% <laughs> yeah. off your order. The, in, yeah. the code is still valid. Um, but uh, since paring down and the wallet's still the thickest thing that I carry, yeah. I ain't doubling up my phone. Well, that's the foldable one, though. I don't think I don't right. think the thickness on the on the rollable one is going to be that much bad. They're not that yeah. not that much bigger than what we currently have. Right. Because um, I mean, they have rollable TVs already. Uh, I don't know how popular those are, but um, I mean, I I I I'd take I take to play, mess with it. I would kind of want to play with it, but I don't know. If I want to like play with it. it. I want to see it, but yeah, there's not been a killer app or a use case. Right. Because the the cell phone the smartphone form factor yeah is a very very mature form factor of course point. oh yeah it um, works great 13 14 years of this is what a smartphone is now mm -hmm. there's been some evolutions within this mm -hmm. but from the original you know moto droid and the iphone one this has been what a smartphone is right um and so all of a sudden they're going, oh, we're going to like go twice, you know, unfold it. And you have two screens side right. by side, or you're going to have this and you're going to have that. It's like for what application software use case, what, Yeah. what are you going to give me that that makes sense to use in my day-to-day -day life? And thus far, I haven't found anything that I go, you know what? If only I had twice as much real estate, this would be an easier thing to do on my phone. I, I don't really think there's too much. I mean, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. And, and that's not to say, because I've, I've said on the channel before, I understand the reason for these devices, and that's to either scale up the production of the technology, to further explore the technology, or to uh, get it ready for another another use case. And so foldable screens or wallpaper material that turns into a screen cut to mm -hmm. size, whatever. Yeah. This is where you start that. And so I understand why they're making the phone but it doesn't make me want one <laughs> yeah no i mean i like the concept more of the of the rollable tv better because mm -hmm. you can have a, like a compact tv in the thing you hit a button and zzz, there it goes out that's pretty neat or like you said if it's on the wall it's actually in the wall itself it's kind of pasted on there basically that's yeah. kind of neat too but yeah with the form factor of a of a phone where it just gets bigger for what reason i don't know mm -hmm. Dual screen phones? I, I have no idea. I, I don't know. Right. You, you can have two instances of, of Android running at once. I don't know. I, two applications even? I've only got two thumbs. Like. I mean, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I, I guess I can say like uh, I've I've tried um, remoting, doing remote desktop into uh, workstation on my phone. 
<laughs> it's pretty bad. It's not great with this form factor, even when you tilt it on its side. Maybe something like this would work out better when you're trying to remote into another computer. You'll have a little more real estate. It looks more like a desktop. It functions more like a desktop. Mm -hmm. I can see that being practical. Right. A little more practical, but yeah. Mm, I, I, not 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 your everyday user. That's what right. I'm saying. Your everyday user, if they're going to do it, it's just because they want a bigger screen to watch more, have more real estate to watch whatever movie they're watching. But but the way they fold doesn't make sense for aspect ratios. No, it doesn't. That you'd not be for watching. aspect ratio. Well, I mean, the four the, by three died mm, a long time ago. <laughs> I know. Well, maybe you want to watch old episodes of things and keep it in the original aspect ratio. <laughs> Actually, I think uh, all the all, or didn't all the original Futuramas they weren't they in the 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 four by yes. five aspect ratio? Yeah, yeah. I think just, you know. Yeah, they were four by three. You're thinking five by four, which is the five twelve by four, eighty yeah. by ten twenty four yeah, PC yeah, yeah, yeah. resolution. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, the the PC master race of two thousand three. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yes. The the elders told us tales of. Them. Oh yeah. That was the I went I went to the I went to the municipal dump the other day because I had a bunch of old electronic stuff that was broken because you could get rid of it for free over there. They'll recycle yeah, they, for they free. Over free, there. free recycle, right? Yeah, and I went and just took a took a glance into the monitor section. It was just a just a pile of sad CRT monitors sitting in there. Yep. I'm like, oh, I miss CRT sometimes. 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 Not sometimes. the size and the weight, but no. they're, What's they're, the uh, largest CRT you ever personally owned? Uh, I had a 21 inch. You had a 21? 21, yeah. I had a 24. Oh, yeah? Um, oh, no, wait. I take that back. I did have a 22 uh, that it was – and it even, it even came with a little hood on the thing because yeah. okay, it's supposed yeah. to be for, like, color calibration and stuff like yeah. that. So you can – so it's darker and you can make yourself a little darker. Um, I got that one. That was pretty nice too. Mm -hmm. So I got a 22-inch one. Yeah, I had a 24, which means, like, 23.1 viewable. Uh, <laughs> you know, back when back when bezels were still measured in inches. Oh yeah, oh yeah, full inches. The, the only, yeah, um, yeah. It was a 24. Um, I'm pretty sure it was a Sony, and mm -hmm. I never should have gotten rid of it. Um, yeah. The heaviest monitor that I've ever had was I had one of the original Apple Studio monitors, the G3 blue, you know, fish tank. Right, those giant not, ones. Not, yeah. not the iMac, but the no. Studio monitor. Mm -hmm. um, those things were huge. It's like 85 pounds. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I remember my 21 inch CRT was, I don't think it was that heavy, but it was, yeah. it was probably about 45, 50 pounds or something yeah. like that. It was not um, fun. And the largest CRT I've ever personally used and moved mm -hmm. was a Mitsubishi 48 inch. Oof. 700 wow. pounds. Oh, who used it was that? A, it was a CRT. Who used that? What was that for? We had two of them. Uh, they had VGA inputs and they had mm -hmm. 1024 by 768 resolution native, Ooh. which was like, <laughs> 75 hertz. Like, oh, wow. like for gaming? Oh, hell oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was fast, um, yeah. But uh, we had them for uh, uh, digital signage, essentially. Oh, okay. Um, so, you know, current events happening here. Right. And that was the largest form factor that you can get without going to a projector. And a projector was, you know, 20 grand for something. At the time, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I bet. And so it was... Yeah, Mitsubishi 48-inch CRTs. My God. That's yeah, the insane. The infrastructure required to put a, a, a screen of that size up, mm -hmm. you had to engineer the mount. Now, oh, yeah. I I hung a 75-inch 70, TV in my living room by myself. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Level. <laughs> And, and that's the that's the thing about you know these rollable screens and stuff like that. You, you could probably have your daughters do it now. Right. <laughs> Pretty soon. Oh, and by the so, way, hey, it's like hanging up a poster, kids. Oh, and by the way, my screen is above our fireplace mantel, and so it wasn't like you know I'm just like hooking it on the wall. It was yeah. I'm standing up on the brick fireplace and then lifting it up above my head, mm -hmm. and and it's on a swinging arm and everything. Yeah. <laughs> and you're just gonna use it to play videos of fire. So, yep, right. <laughs> I'm not going to use the fireplace. I'm just going to have pictures of fire above my fireplace. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, see, we do the uh, the uh, Return of the Jedi Yule Log, which is the burning of Darth Vader for eight hours. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I saw those, uh, what they had. They have a few varieties, but I think they had like a Darth Vader, a Stormtrooper, and a Skull. And they mm -hmm. were like... Uh, cement casts of them that you put in your uh, fire pit 
so that when you start a fire, they're just sitting there burning like that. So this looks like charred, <laughs> charred skulls or charred you know, whatever. I, I kind of want like a like a, a hollow stormtrooper rock, so oh, yeah. I could put it in the fire. So like eyes are burning. Just burning out like that. Yeah, yeah. that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. Gonna, somebody, somebody start making that. Recreate the Ewok scene. That's what I want. There you go. Yeah. So I don't know how we got from foldable phones to burning. <laughs> dark it happens, but... you know. There it is. <laughs> All right, what do we got next? Oh, what do we got next? Treadmills. treadmills. Yes. The, the, the funnest of all treadmills. Yes. Uh, we've talked about the Virtuix Omni quite a few times over the years. And in mm -hmm. fact, uh, the history of the Virtuix Omni goes way back before even I started my channel. Oh, yeah. It's been around um, for a while, and the R&D is... Back when I was in... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the Virtuix Omni, for those who don't know, is a uh, virtual reality treadmill of sorts that has been in uh, early stages and early access and Kickstarter and you name it. I think this this one might have been an Indiegogo. I don't remember. Um, but uh, the concept of it is full locomotion in place. Yeah. And so you can walk, you can run, you can jump, you can crawl all while staying stationary. And the way it works is it's kind of like a concave bowl mm -hmm. that is 100% smooth, and you wear what are essentially bowling shoes. Uh, yeah. So they're they're a felt bottom shoe that allow mm -hmm. you to walk seamlessly, um, and in in games. Just think of a steel drum coated in olive oil. <laughs> it's like that. I don't need to hear about your last Saturday <laughs> night. Steve. <laughs> the Jamaican fantasies. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so it's kind of a cool concept, and it's been in the works for quite a, a few number, of, quite a few years, quite a few number of years. Yes. Um, well, it says right in the article, me. 2013. So yeah, it's it's been a while. Right. It's, it's almost no, I, ten years. Yeah, I I remember watching this as a concept when it first came out like a year after uh, Palmer Lucky was making headlines with the Oculus Rift. Mm -hmm. um, because as soon as that became, as soon as the, the, the Oculus DK1 came out, I saw this guy, um, not the guy in this, but the guy who made this. Um, I remember watching YouTube videos of his, of he's got a Microsoft Connect sensor that is skeletal tracking him while he's moving. And he had integrated locomotion from that into Skyrim and uh, Battlefield 3 and a couple of different games like that. Um, so I remember when this project started. Um, but as cool as this technology is, as, as really exciting as this is, unless places like VR arcades start to jump on board and buy these and get Virtuix Omni the capital that they need to continue. Yeah. Um, this is going nowhere fast. And I don't mean to sound like a downer, but I um, realistically, this is a $2,000 peripheral for a 2% niche market of the PC gaming space. Yep. The, the PC gaming space is only 2% of it is VR. 1.8% of all Steam users worldwide own a VR headset of some kind. 1.8. And how many of them play regularly? Yeah. Um, and so it's a niche mark, very, very niche market. Um, something, something Halo product. So <laughs> I feel like I was saying niche too much, so I had to throw another uh, yeah. another one of my catchphrases in. Raid is not a backup. Um, but uh, so the, the marketability and uh, your target audience is already not that big you're going to be aiming at two percent of your of that target yeah, i know that's super small uh with a two thousand dollar peripheral that may or may not have the software support yeah. on the back end of it to play the games you want yeah i i think they said that they had there's a buy-in for the library that you have to do uh and i think like some of the games they were saying might might be on there mm-hmm uh, didn't really i mean fortnite not really something i'm super excited about uh call of duty uh i mean call of duty maybe might be kind of fun but i don't know i'd, I'd want something 
more if I was going to play something like that, something more tactical and mm -hmm. slow paced, something like Arma or something like well, not even Arma because it'd be driving. How would they get driving to work on that thing? Mm. But um, you know, uh, like CS:GO or something like that, maybe might be a little better. Uh, Pavlov in the VR scape, yeah, would something be, that would be, that would be great too. Yeah, yeah, right. Pavlov, um, Half Life, Alex. Yeah, that would not, be awesome. Not even like you know multiplayer games, but just like those type of experiences. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, Half Life Alex is the greatest VR game that I have ever played, um, and I I don't say that lightly as someone who used to own and operate a VR arcade. <laughs> um, I mean, small small organization, small business yeah. that I ran, but I got to play a lot of VR, yeah. um, and and I've been into the VR space since my original funding of a dk1 yeah you know uh so and if games like that aren't going to be available for it you're you're going to shrink your market down even more on top of that because no right. one's going to be interested in it right. you could have but, the greatest peripheral in the world but if no one wants to put software to work with it right then you're not going to do anything with it yeah and unless this is a, a native sdk or it they're taking advantage of an sdk where they can integrate their own software mm -hmm. into locomotion that the unreal engine is taking advantage of right. or you know uh so they can go whatever locomotion you're using for whatever vr game you're using we can integrate into that um it's gonna be a hard sell it's yeah. gonna be a really hard sell because of the two to five percent of people who could even be interested in oh yeah i've got two grand to drop and and and, and you know i don't need my third treadmill in the in the guest suite anymore mm -hmm. I could, you know dev devote that i guess to uh you know a vr space um of those five percent what percent of the games that they want to play are going to be supported i kind of want to do <laughs> I want to do a VR uh, version of uh, Flight Simulator mm -hmm. for toddlers, where you just put your hands out and go. Uh, there was a bird simulator <laughs> game where you lay on like a piano bench and you oh, yeah. flap your wings. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Steve, I can let you live your dream. Oh, that'd be, that'd be wonderful. I was going to let my four-year-old do it, but he'd probably start running and then like the cord would yank out and he'd like whoa yeah. what went on <laughs> yeah i i keep keeping my head or my ear to the ground because i'm i'm waiting for something like uh an htc vive or an index or uh some kind of headset that's not the oculus and it's not that i have anything against the oculus headset itself it's i have something against facebook and forced integration and, and yeah. all that jazz um uh that and I've been less and less impressed with the, well, the Oculus Quest 2 is the only headset that I would consider getting at this point mm -hmm. uh, from Oculus. But I, I want to see Windows Mixed Reality get a second generation and, and mm -hmm. go with a wireless solution or, you know, have an affordable wireless solution for another headset. Yeah. Um, whether it's HTC or the Vive Index or whatever. Because um, I, I, I don't play it enough anymore to devote you know fifteen hundred dollars to it but at the same time wireless would fix a lot of problems with vr uh as yeah. far as yanking the cord out of your head right or... exactly and just just that feeling of being attached to something because you always right. have that thing of it's hanging off you mm -hmm. i mean this this peripheral is supposed to help you know eliminate the clunky controls where you like i'm pointing to where i need to walk and then right. there you're there right or, or the you know thumb controls like you're walking like with the controller or something like that it's supposed to feel a lot more natural and immersed but you're still gonna have those things strapped to your back you're still gonna feel like you're attached to something so i don't know it'll be interesting to see where this goes yep. and it's still like you said still a niche market so it's probably going to develop very 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 slowly unless it becomes extremely popular very quickly right and and like like I said, it has. It's this has been developing since 2013. I remember right. watching the original launch video for whatever uh, crowdfund they were trying to go. Like I said, I think it was Indiegogo is who, is who these guys went through. Mm -hmm. But I've been watching progress of the Virtuous Omni for seven years, and it's cool that they're finally getting ready to ship. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't think they ever would. Um, but two grand. That's that's a big ask. Like 
And, and this is from someone who owns a steel battalion controller for the Xbox. Oh, yeah. Those things were cool. <laughs> hey, do you still have that thing? I still have it. Do you, you, they might be worth something now. I think they're, uh, they're, they're kind of highly sought of. Yeah. Right. Um, they're worth a little bit. Not quite as much as you might think. They're, they're worth a little bit more than the retail that they were originally. So, oh, okay. Um, like 175, 200 in like perfect condition. I don't have the box. Oh. I do have an Xbox. I kept my OG Xbox and the controller, and I have two copies of the Steel Battalion game. Um, and that's the only reason I kept the OG Xbox, um, was, you know, one day I might want to hook this up and play again. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I, they might have like, you know, drivers for the PC right. or something like that. You can hook this, it up. This is coming from someone who owned a super scope six for the super Nintendo. Oh yeah. <laughs> right here. I think I, I, I am no super stranger scope. to expensive peripherals. Yeah. Yeah. The Virtuox Omni is a, it is a, is an expensive peripheral that I hope doesn't struggle. Yeah, my parents got us that the Nintendo uh, pad where you'd run on it. Yeah. They thought we needed more exercise, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> they thought that, well, if you're going to sit here and play video games, why don't you play something like this? And we ended up just, like, figuring out that you can hook up a controller to it and then just, like, mm-hmm. yeah. and then it would work just the same. And we're like, oh, look, I'm, yeah, <laughs> look track how fast and, we're track going. Look field. how fast we're going. Yeah, look track how fast we're going. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, we barely even played with that thing. Yep. All right. Uh... Should we get into it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, we got a little pregame appetizer here for you. Uh, so we're getting into RTX talk. Um, boy, uh, they could have had a smoother launch. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, extremely. <laughs> um, I will say in, in a year that has lacked a lot of content to talk about on this show, there's been numerous weeks where we struggled. It's been no no shortage of uh, talking about what NVIDIA or an NVIDIA-related product has screwed mm-hmm. up with this week. Well, especially <laughs> with all the, all the marketing and the hype that they put up behind it. I mean, right. there's a lot to talk about just there. Double and, the performance of yeah, the 2080 Yeah, I mean, Ti. hey, I mean, yeah. They're, you they're, can't buy one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they're just teasing us with that carrot on a stick. It, it's that uh, that Geico commercial with the, the guy with the dollar at a fishing pole Ooh, i got you oh yeah i got you i got you a dollar yeah (laughs) or was that state farm i can't remember yeah something like that but yeah i remember the commercial yeah yeah got you a dollar i got you a dollar (laughs) Ooh, you almost had it there um so starting with the supply constraints of the rtx 3080 we won't Mm -hmm. even talk about the 3090 because that's not where most people are reaching for right most people are just trying to get the 3080 because again that's the first graphics upgrade we've had since Pascal. Mm -hmm. Um, And so we've tried to find them. Uh, They're out of stock everywhere. Yeah. So according to a Danish retailer, uh, what was the name of that retailer again? Who was that? Pro Shop. Pro Shop. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Not not the Bass one, but the the, the, (laughs) the PC one. Um, uh, Pro Shop has revealed that they have only been able to ship 10% of their RTX 3000 or 3080 pre-orders. 10% have actually yep. shipped. Yep. Um, That's abysmal. Right. Here is their full list of cards they have shipped. Um, you know, the the MSI Ventus, uh, you know, one of, one of their more popular series of cards. Uh, They've had 200 orders. They've received zero. There are zero in transit. Um, yeah. I mean, look at look at the underway. Right now, this retailer only has 123 cards inbound for them. Yeah. Not that much. They took 2,000 pre-orders of the RTX Tough. Yes, I know. And, the, and, an, the, and the another 2,000 two... more of the Tough OC. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, and uh yeah they've received uh 55 of those cards so far yeah that is out of 2000 orders that's sad and i mean seeing you know low double digit numbers for any of these graphics cards is that's abysmal and uh in any any people who still doubted maybe this was a paper maybe this was a paper launch maybe it wasn't a paper launch maybe people are actually getting their cards and it's just there's so much pent up hype and we're all spending a lot of time at home anymore 
and so we want a game and we want to upgrade and we want to do this and that maybe there was just so much demand no that i yeah i don't know i think it may be a combination of things really uh and i think you might be right there's a lot of people at home uh, i think there's a lot of hype with the uh, performance increase uh i think the lackluster uh enthusiasm for the the 2000 series right <clears throat> not too many people i mean i i know some people did i did uh more out of necessity not because i really wanted to um i think that maybe they're like okay let's not let's not release so much because maybe we'll have a glut a big supply like maybe they did with the rtx with the the 2000 rtx's right i don't know and maybe maybe they uh underestimated the demand who knows but this is a huge underestimate like yeah. gigantic underestimate right I, I no, I don't think this is an underestimate. I think this is a we wanted to get out the news before AMD had a chance, and we wanted to get cards in hand first. So maybe there will just be so much hype that people will wait past the AMD thing right. until we actually have the cards in hand ready to yeah. ship. Now they might just because... piss people off enough that they're going to go AMD because that's the only thing they're going to get their hands on. Right. And AMD has come out and publicly said we won't have any supply issues at launch. Mm -hmm. There's not going to be any. Yeah, because um, I mean they they although maybe maybe now there will because no one can buy Nvidia cards right now. <laughs> the speculation is is that a uh, supply isn't going to be ready until next year. Like right. they're going to miss the Christmas uh, supply. The, the, yeah. the basically the whole this whole Christmas. Yeah, Jensen has said supply constraints will continue until 2021. Yeah. Um. So through the end of the year, you're not going to get an RTX 3080 or 3090 for Christmas either. Yeah. And you, you can get. You can get a. It. You'll get a card that says, "Hey, you might get one." Right. <laughs> so we paid for it, but uh you might not get one. Right. Um. So yeah, it's uh, it's not looking good for Nvidia. Um. Mm -hmm. And this is all self-inflicted. It really, really is self-inflicted. Yeah. Um. So, I just finished my beer. I think yeah, I want to open another. I think I want to open a second one, so we can get into the big story of the week. All right. Which is the only headline I put in my title this week. <laughs> yes, MSI I know. MSI scalping RTX 3080. That's right. Let's talk. Allegedly, about. allegedly, 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 allegedly. Let's talk about it because I feel like I have a little bit different take than. Well, I I have my take. I'll say that. I have yeah. my take. Um, we'll get into it. All right. What are you, what are we opening next, Steve? Uh, you know, I want the, you know, I'm going to I'm going to finish big with my Imperial in the evening. So I'm going to go with my IPA next. All right. What you got for an IPA? Mm. Buble stash. Oh, that's oh yeah. Yeah, that's Buble. Right. Our bubble, however you want to pronounce it. Cam and bubbly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of the greatest SNL skits of all time. Oh, yeah. John Hamm and Michael Bubbly. Uh, it's Buble, not anymore. Buble. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, for me, I am going with uh, also an IPA. I've got a Golden Road Brewing uh, Wolf Pup Session IPA. Wolf Pup Session? Wolf Pup Session. Is this another one of... Uh... Bite my bits. This came from BMB, but this is a Los Angeles, California. Uh, oh, really? So yeah. I I have not. I've had a few brewery, uh, beers from LA. Mm -hmm. I never really liked a single one, really. So far, I have not been impressed with Kansas. Although that Pilsner was surprisingly good. Hmm. Oh God. Now San Diego, lots of great beers. San Diego, LA. Hmm, I uh, mean, so LA, you're not impressing me because the can just blew up on me. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> it has a slight smoggy aftertaste. Maybe. Oh, we got uh, technical difficulties. Well, where's where's Zeke to come look it up? He's an alcoholic now. He's probably gonna want some. Well, I guess he's I guess he's been banned. He had his AA meeting to get to. Like, that was a wild amount of liquid that just seeped out of that can. I should well, have watched did, John's tutorial yeah, I was on gonna how say, to avoid that. Did you that. just watch John's how to how to decarb or de defuzz or whatever? Just take his advice and like don't open it and open a different one. I didn't shake it. Yeah, I know. This beer's been sitting here for forty minutes. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. 
I'm sure bite my bits. Jason just shook it up before he put it in the box. I'm sure it's it's lasted this long. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Coron Coronado is is in uh, San Diego. Yeah, yeah, yeah. San Diego has great breweries. Uh, L.A. Yes. not so much. Not, not that I've not so that I've much. not that I've been. I've only been to a handful, but all right. There we go. Crisis averted. So there's there my. We go. Uh, oh, it's an interesting color. It's almost that green. is that's very almost yeah green. Yeah. Mm. Yes, Jason shook up my beer. That's exactly mm. what happened. Um, all right, let's do this. <laughs> you ready for this? Uh, yeah. And in fact, I didn't uh, bring up the original Reddit post, so I'm gonna do that real okay. quick as well. Uh, while I'm teeing this up. So, um, this story broke very, very late last night. Yep. Um, uh, and sorry, I'm trying to do like four things at once here. Um, no, I don't want to go to another website. I want to search on this website. MSI Scalping. Yeah, Coronado, as, oh, you can keep going on. Coronado uh, Brewing... They had one of my one of my favorite beers. That I don't think they make it anymore. Oh no, wait, that's Ballast Point. Well, oh, maybe thinking Coronado. Yeah. Coronado's still good though. I'm pretty sure I had their red. I'll have to go pull it up on Untapped to see if I had it. There we go. Got it. So the original post was on our hardware, mm -hmm. um, and uh... oh gosh, what was the second? Uh, there we go. All right. Sorry, I should have done that beforehand, but there we go. Um, so this all came up very, very quickly last night. Like 7 p.m. I heard like kind of a uh, MSI did something again. Yes. Oh, wait. Okay. Um, so MSI has allegedly been caught uh, scalping, which is not really scalping if you're selling them your self because scalping <laughs> implies resale so scalping is not the right term price gouging how's that price gouging rtx 3080s and 3090s on ebay um so a user found uh uh a couple of suspicious product links that were all product photography uh and msi all, all msi branded cards uh selling on ebay for Thirteen, fifteen, eighteen hundred dollars uh, for RTX thirty eighties. Um, they decided to look up the company, which was Starlit, uh, Starlit Partner. Um, and I said, "Hmm, I wonder who this is." Starlit Partner, as it turns out, lists their corporate address as the same exact corporate address as MSI, uh, MSI Corporation in the United States. Um, it is a registered trademark. It is a licensed business. It is everything. So mm -hmm. um, unless this was some large elaborate scam, Starlet is a fully owned company. And in fact, they've found uh, 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 all the documentation that Starlet is 100% a subsidiary of MSI US. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. What Starlet is responsible for is selling uh, B stock and refurbished gear on different retail sites. They are a um, a end, end uh, user or an end, end chain retailer, there we go, uh, for MSI. Yep. Um, now, MSI selling their cards on eBay. Yes, four of them. There were four cards sold by Starlet partners okay four cards um and i'm i'm talking like this to bring the hate down, down yeah. <laughs> just a little bit and yeah. let me be very clear i am not defending msi mm -hmm. but i'm saying if you want to get your teeth out save it for something that deserves teeth um because if you react like this for every single slight like we did about the capacitors. 
Remember we talked about that like a week ago? Turns out it was just a buggy driver like every other graphics card at launch. Um, although it'd be nice if we could actually test cards in large numbers. Um, <laughs> maybe we would have gotten to that point yeah, a little maybe, sooner had, maybe it could have been avoided. we had yeah. cards in hand. Yeah. Um, but uh, remember how everyone was ready to point fingers at every single AIB and NVIDIA for being a bunch of idiots? And I said, well, what's more likely that simultaneously every single engineer at NVIDIA and every single engineer at every board partner suddenly forgot the basics of power design on their cards, or maybe it's just a buggy driver. And it turns out it was a buggy driver. Um, but people were ready for blood and, and people were ready for, you know, never buy a gigabyte card because they, or Zotac card because they cheaped out on their capacitors. And- It was an Amish mistake. <laughs> right. It's a buggy driver. It's a buggy driver, yeah. It's a buggy. <laughs> I'm proud of that. I am actually, I thought you're, that was pretty good. You're rather proud of that. I, I liked guess. it, yeah. Um, <laughs> but I don't know what it is right now that is making people go nuts over PR fiascos. Um, I, I don't know. This is not a good look for MSI, especially because this is like the third fiasco that they've been involved in with in, with in as many months, is what I was trying to say. Um, there was the... Uh, uh, MSI Euro uh, had a, a, a new PR rep that came over from China who wanted a reviewer to take down a laptop review that they didn't agree with, offered to pay yep. them money and, and whatnot. And that is totally not kosher. It's not kosher in the West. That does happen in the Chinese and Asian markets, though. That's a totally respected practice. Um, in in the Western practices for, you know, reviewing, that's not an accepted thing. And uh, people like to think that companies like MSI are, every single player is absolutely by the book. And ev it would shock you how much more of the wild, wild west that PR and just sales in general is as an industry, oh, yeah. as an entire industry. Um, it's... It's very much who knows who, who shakes whose hand, you know, I can get you this deal, I can do this, I can do that for you. Um, it's very much, there's far fewer policies for things like that than you would, than you might expect. However, there are also accepted practices and company policies to prevent certain things from taking place, like paying off reviewers. Mm -hmm. um, but an employee does have a certain amount of expendable cash per year. Maybe they decided to spend that on paying off this reviewer because that's how they spent their expendable money in China. You know, <laughs> it, it's a culture thing. It's, but whatever. Um, people like to think that MSI has full control over what every single one of their employees does from top to bottom and that every single employee follows the exact same policy. Um, and I'm not just singling out MSI for the sake of MSI. I'm talking about the industry as a whole, well outside of consumer electronics. This happens in every industry. Yeah. That a salesman will say, "Well, I can get you this rate, and blah blah oh. blah, and we'll we'll cover the shipping." And oh, it's even it's even worse in software. I mean, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, um, right. Uh, so I'll, I'll get to the gamers nexus thing here in just a minute uh thomas just uh msi has a track record whoa 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 msi has a track record let's expand on this okay um msi has had three bad instances in three months and one of which is directly nvidia's fault and the second of which might also kind of be nvidia's fault and that's the point that i'm getting to um so uh when it comes to PR, your job as a PR person is to create good PR for the company you're working for. And it's usually, in all of my experience with a bunch of PR people, is usually by following ethical guidelines and, and you know, trying to spin a message a certain way or do, you know, get products into reviewers' hands or get your products promoted or whatever else. You want your company to look good. Um, and so that was an instance of an employee that said, hey, we'll pay you off if you don't post this review. 
MSI became aware of it, they said, we don't do that here. And that's not a practice that I've ever had happen, nor anyone that I've ever talked to. Has that even been a question that's ever been arisen? Um, moving on to the MSI, how they were involved with the NVIDIA paper launch uh, and buggy drivers and capacitors and blah, 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 blah. Um, MSI was taking heat for one card because they only included one set of MLCC caps and they should have done two. And uh, then they also have their uh, their gaming trio, which has all the MLCC caps, but was still affected by the buggy driver. But for some reason, they were being targeted on both sides of it. Um, and so MSI had their name dragged through the mud again for one thing that was kind of their fault, but also dealt with in exactly the right way. And then another thing that was completely not their fault because they didn't get the drivers until after reviewers got the drivers. <laughs> um, then we move on to this issue right here with yep. Starlet, uh, Starlet Partner. Now, MSI responded very, very quickly to this. They said, and I know no one's going to believe this, but hear me out. Just just hear me out, okay? Um, they said the issue was due to an error in their inventorying system, which gave Starlet partners access to SKUs they should not have. And people go, oh, that's just, that's just bull. They're just covering yeah. now. Now, hold on. You're an enthusiast. You want to get your hands, like, Steve, I'll talk to you. You sold your 2070 Super, or 2070, mm -hmm. so you could get an RTX 3080. Yep. Okay. Can you buy an RTX 3080 right now? Cannot. Are you frustrated? Uh, yeah. yeah I'm are, a little bit. Are, are you looking for any excuse to <laughs> say, well, the supply chain is broken and these manufacturers, these OE, these board partners are screwing up because they gave Jay and Paul two RTX 3090 so they could have this stupid competition and crank up the hype, but they won't sell one to me Yeah, and whatnot. Um, trust me, the reviewers that got cards are not the root of the supply problem, the supply chain problem worldwide. Yeah. Let's make that clear. The 20 cards that got sent out to reviewers aren't even a drop in the yeah. bucket. Yeah. Okay. And those cards would have been allocated for reviewers any anyway. way. Because yeah. as a PR person, you have to promote your product and get the message out there. That's the job of PR. Um, so that's not the problem. Um, but if you take yourself away as an enthusiast or someone who's in the market for an RTX 3080 and you think about this whole situation a little bit more logically because people were were throwing out accusations like well the person at Starlet who's responsible for posting the eBay ads should have known that he right. shouldn't have access to that product or should have known that there's a global shortage or should have known that the price shouldn't be that well the the chat's been 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 talk about Hanlon's razor like this is a Hanlon's razor type situation correct like, never um, never never attribute to malice which could be accurately explained by stupidity stupidity yeah right just um, exactly what this situation or I, seems I'm to not be. even gonna call it stupidity I'm gonna call it it's, incompetence it, which is not yeah. knowing yeah um stupidity implies well, you could say you're ignorance. not capable Ign of knowing ignorance, ignorance is no, no knowledge you don't right. really have knowledge ignorance, stupidity right. means just like no. ignorance would be a better word right exactly um but uh Everyone who's attacking MSI right now is attacking them from an enthusiast standpoint who is frustrated by the entire situation. Mm -hmm. Who, I can't buy a graphics card, and MSI is all of a sudden part of the problem because they're just inflating the price. Yeah. However, put yourself into the shoes of Joe Schmo, who happens to be the guy, the one guy, who's responsible for posting eBay listings on behalf of Starlit Partners, and all you see are skews. Yep. You walk into your office on Monday morning. You go, oh, look, there's four new SKUs that I can post. How many do we have in stock? We have four. Okay, let me get the, the product photos and we'll get those posted onto eBay. He doesn't have hands on graphics cards. He doesn't, all he knows is the retail price of them and what he should start the auction at. And because Starlet sells B stock and refurb, they'll put them up for auction sometimes. They'll do buy it now sometimes. Yeah. They happen to put them up for auction. They, they and probably the, have and, like, and the bidders bid them up to fourteen hundred dollars. If it's just like any other company, they probably have some kind of queuing system where they log in with their names. Like, here's your job. This is what you do. They yep. go and do it. Your your job is to take this item that is in our inventory. You have four allocated. You can you can create a listing with this and put all the proper information and product photos and everything else. And 
get the listing created and then when it ships you know take care of the the handling mm -hmm. someone's job is that their job is not to be the keeper of global supply chain for msi and they sold four cards just four yeah that's why it seems like it's just a mistake it's not like right this yeah. was not a they sold a thousand cards on ebay for a markup now let's take this a step further what kind of shape as a company would msi have to be in to go you know what we're not making a lot of money right now what do you say we take our 800 dollars graphics cards and we sell them for 1400 on ebay and we pat our books by about 20,000 before the end of the quarter. How, do you know what infinitesimally <laughs> small decimal that is of their their quarterly revenue? Yeah, that's like that's like that's a that's a <laughs> that's a rounding error in their favor. That's like some higher up at Rolex saying, "You know what we really need is a bunch of salespeople in front of stores with trench coats and saying, right. "Hey, hey buddy, you want to buy a ball? You want to buy a watch?" That's by the way, <laughs> my, my my voice has reached a certain pitch right now and so i think i want to institute the new feature here on talking heads um <laughs> just makes me smile okay. um uh i am beyond frustrated with the supply chain issues that all of you are frustrated with yep. i am beyond frustrated with nvidia treating reviewers and the supply and the hype and everything else like this i i i I screamed about it a couple of weeks ago about how this was such an abysmally handled launch um, from NVIDIA. Uh, the reviewers didn't have drivers until four days before the cards are in the hands of consumers, in theory. Mm -hmm. They got drivers on Friday. You could buy it at Micro Center on Tuesday. Yeah. That's the review cycle. Mm -hmm. AIBs didn't get the driver until Monday. They're the manufacturers of the God cards, you know, and I'm trying not to ramp myself <laughs> up too much here, but I'm, I'm on that. You're on that high. You're getting that peak. I'm on the same knife's edge as an RTX 3000 series overclock. Yeah. <laughs> before, the, before the capacitors blow. <laughs> before the, yeah. Oh, God. It's fake, it's fake news, Stephen. I know, I know, I know, I know. Yeah. Um, but how bad of a shape would MSI have to be to go, you know, of the of the 1,100 cards that we've been able to ship globally, why don't we just put those all on eBay and let people just bid them up? Yeah. No. Yeah. No company would do that. Number one, it's illegal. <laughs> <laughs> it is illegal in the United States to perform business that way. Number two, there's partnerships with nvidia that state you have to sell within a certain margin of price there's an msrp that you cannot go go below mm -hmm. um for certain graphics cards and so the lowest price um nvidia has kind of changed what the msrp rule is used to be msrp was like 6.99 and then the graphics card would sell for 485 because that's what it was. You wanted to feel like you got a savings. Now Nvidia has like flipped the script and the cheapest graphics card that you could possibly buy is 699 and all the board partners have there for 750. Um but but they're under contract and obligations and everything else to sell their graphics cards within a certain price bracket. Now they have freedom within that bracket and they have some freedom of design, but all AIB designs also have to be signed off by Nvidia. Um which means the whole capacitor thing, every single one of those board's designs was signed off by NVIDIA. Do you think every single engineer involved in the design and manufacturing process suddenly forgot how to design power delivery for a GPU? Or do no. you think maybe there's a driver issue? Do you just, think- Just like with every single release of every single NVIDIA card there's ever right. been, there's been like just a driver issue at least one time. Right. Something, um, something's gone. And And do you think that the guy in charge, and by the way, I have it on good authority that it's one guy at Starlit Pro, uh, Partners that is responsible for posting eBay auctions. Do you think that one guy who posted four auctions for RTX 3080s, number one, gives up, but number two, <laughs> but number two, he just showed up, did his job. Yeah. And and this was not selling thousands of cards. 
he he does have a wispy villainy mustache that he twists whenever yes. he posts those those eBay ads though. But it doesn't mean he's evil though. That's that's just he has, that's he has just... a puppy that he keeps in a kennel yeah. that's a half size too small that he kicks once an hour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, what do you guys think this is? And if you're gonna rake and my whole point about all this is because this NVIDIA launch has been one media firestorm after another. Um, put the blame where it belongs. And right now, a lot of this blame sits squarely with NVIDIA. Mm -hmm. Because had we gotten drivers and had we been able to test earlier and had we had more widespread testing, the drivers would have been better tuned. There would have been more adoption. There would have been more bug fixes applied previous to launch number two so that was the first issue that nvidia could have avoided with further testing and what was obviously a rushed launch number two this whole thing with msi and selling cards on ebay do you realize the only reason that this is even talked about is because no one can buy cards anywhere else yeah if nvidia actually supplied manufacturers with the cards that they needed or the chips that they needed to build the cards so they could ship them yeah. worldwide this small snake wouldn't even been noticed because no one would have cared right yeah msi wouldn't have even given a crap about this yeah one. four four cards that went out that probably would have gone slightly below msrp because if the supply was there if the supply no was one would there, care no one would care Right. So, someone would have bid them up to $640 and you yeah. would have had four really happy people who got $40 off retail. Exactly. Yeah. This would not have been an issue if, if OEMs and board partners had cards in stock. Mm -hmm. the, you're, you're mad at a symptom of a exactly. much bigger problem and you're raking MSI through the coals for what was an inventory glitch. Yeah. There's, they, they want, they're out for blood. And so NVIDIA are right. not, or MSI's, uh, they're in the water and they got a little scratch. So now the right. sharks are circling. And, and I, I said it last week with the capacitor thing. And I, I don't want to call anyone out. I don't, I, I'm, I don't want to bring that on myself, but I was so frustrated to see, um, a video posted today that, uh, can you trust a company that, that does this? Learn the facts. Look at what it is. Well, you, you know, rage bait. Rage bait's also a thing too. You know, once once it came out, you know, you get more yes, clicks for people when rage bait's like, yes, oh, it is. yeah, um, screw MSI. I want to I watch right. this. And, and speaking of, I was awake all night long last night and I watched the live stream with, with Steve gamers Nexus. And, and he goes, guys, come on, calm down. They sold four cards. This isn't that big of a deal. You woke me up at, for this. I'm, I'm in my <laughs> office at three 30 in the morning for this. And I have to do a 30 minute live stream to tell you guys to calm your tits. <laughs> like, like that's, that was his general message. Um, and, uh, uh, it irritated me to no end to see a rage bait, video come out again within 12 hours of speculation of uh, and i will say he did a better job this time of saying you know i'm gonna use a lot of words like allegedly and proposed and <laughs> and, and 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 people have said and and <laughs> supposedly and in perpetuity oh, right <laughs> right so no <laughs> this shouldn't have happened from msi's end but Starlet Partners is a 100% legitimate operation that is a 100% subsidiary of MSI Corp US. And every single manufacturer, every single OEM, um, they have their global corporations, but then you have local 100% subsidiaries in, your con in, in localized countries to do business, or, or regions rather, to do business within those regions. And so MSI Corp, which is based in Taiwan, is not the same company, not the same president as MSI Corp in US, is not the same MSI Corp as, uh, you know, Asia, is not the same corp as South, South America, Europe, is not the same corp as Australia. They are different corporations with different distribution networks, with different practices, partners, employees, policies, everything. Yep. Um, now, they operate as a different company. Now, obviously, 
they're all MSI. And at some point, they all kind of branch back up that tree to one singular company. But it's not one person writing policy from the top down. Right. It's I not... mean, you have different countries, different regions, different right. policies, different rules they have to abide by. Right. So it makes sense that they separate it that way. Right. And and the reason you separate it that way and every single company. Um, I think every international its, company. Anyway. Every international company. Yeah. Operates this way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there are very few that operate as a single autonomous unit. Apple is one of the weird ones that operates as one autonomous unit uh, as a global uh, company, but it's because they're big enough to have entire divisions of the company that are not subsidiaries to handle regional compliance laws. Um, the reason you do uh, a, a, a US head and a UK you know, remote office and, and whatnot and have it be a subsidiary company is that company deals with that local region's laws of, of business and, mm -hmm. and taxes and, and everything else. Um, you set your own policies based on regional requirements. And that way it doesn't come back on one company to operate one way in China and another way in the United States. I, I'm pretty sure Valve has something like that too, uh, but mm -hmm. they don't have regional things because they're, I, as far as I know, they only have one development shop uh, mm -hmm. in, in Seattle. Mm -hmm. Right. But they definitely do have international presence and everything, and they have to abide by international trade laws and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. But their software, though, that's different than right. hardware. It's a little bit different. A little bit different, yeah. Right. But every single region has their own PR departments or sometimes PR companies that they contract out to. Every single one has, has different ways of doing business. And if you want to be mad at MSI for selling four cards on eBay... That's on you for not doing your research. Right now, I'm frustrated beyond belief at NVIDIA for causing this kind of firestorm, for causing this kind of problem because they wanted to get out in front of AMD. They wanted to get their name out there first. They wanted to get the benchmarks out there first. So they, ru so they rushed the launch and they kept everything so close to the vest that none of these problems could be discovered before it got out there. Um, I personally want to buy an RTX 3090 for my editing rig. I want 24 gigs of VRAM because, uh, let me tell you, editing in ProRes Because you want because you want to load Crisis Three into a, a, the VRAM. Well, kind of, but, but <laughs> editing ProRes Raw. Yes, at I know. 4K, right? Yeah, yeah, that'd be awesome. I I push the limits of of my eight gigs of RAM constantly on that machine, mm -hmm. and uh, um, I mean, look at Epo's Vox. He had edits in 5.6K uh, uh, raw a lot of times, mm -hmm. and. People go, well, why do you need an RTX Titan? It performs just barely better than because I need 16 gigs of VRAM to edit these videos. These these don't just sit on my hard drive and magically turn into you know full yeah. production videos. Yeah. Um, it takes so this is a consumer card with 24 gigs of video memory. That's fifteen hundred dollars. Do you realize the the closest we've ever gotten to this is like thirty five hundred dollars for a card that had 16 gigs of RAM? Mm-hmm. Like seriously, this, this is, is this is this is great. This is like half that, <laughs> or less than more than half that. Right for fifty percent for fifty percent more, yeah. Than what's ever been available. Yeah, and I uh, think that's what a lot of the hype went behind the three thousand series because you're right. getting so much more for the exact same price or less. Mm -hmm. But like you said, being a paper launch, the supply right. wasn't there. Right, and that's kind of yeah. Right, all all of these problems for the last three weeks fall squarely back at Nvidia. Because the board partners are just along for the ride. They're just along for the ride like the rest of us. I, I talked to all of my people, and two weeks before launch, no one could tell me when the launch was actually going to happen. Two mm -hmm. weeks before. So, rushed by NVIDIA. Yeah. Radeon 7 does have 16 gigs, but CUDA is a thing for a lot of professional applications. Uh, AMD still has a way to go to to catch up with AMD is, or catch up with NVIDIA as far as being uh, industry leading for uh, adoption, Ad adoption in programs. Yeah, not just not just gaming, but yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, but uh, Adobe Premiere all of a sudden being CUDA aware, oh my God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Let's yeah. get, then you'll get twice as many crashes. That's <laughs> I'm I'm gonna knock on wood right now. God, I have a stable version right now and I just wanna oh, I yeah. just wanna cuddle it at night. 
Um, and I don't say that very often about Adobe Premiere. Um, but uh, man, it's the version that I'm on right now is pretty rock solid. Rock solid. Oh, that's good. God, it's been good. Yeah. It's going to be like five years before you upgrade. You're like, uh, okay, upgrade. Right. So all that being said, have I talked to anyone off the ledge? That's what I, that's what I really want to know. Because I, I, I'm still a consumer myself at heart. I, I still buy things that I don't get sent because I want to play with these things. I spent $750 the other day on a CPU that may or may not arrive. Like, I, I still like these things and I, I still am a consumer and I still, you know, not everyone sends me everything for free. In fact, the things that I get for free, I often have to spend additional money to make work because I don't have a whole parts library behind me. Um, and so the work that you see on this channel, a lot of it is funded. And if you want to help fund that, go join the Patreon. Link hey. is in the video description. Had to get the plug in somehow. Yeah, actually, um, I haven't looked at the at the <laughs> at the Discord in a while here. Oh yeah, there's people chatting. Yeah, yeah, I've got it up. Um, <laughs> Big Big Spoon. Sorry, I missed your donation earlier. Big Big Spoon, five dollars. Uh, imposter among us. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. Uh, yeah, it. I I'm still a consumer at heart, and I'm still an enthusiast at heart. Mm -hmm. And but, you also have to. And I don't want to accuse the Reddit Hive mind of not thinking about this all with logic. A lot but of the for, a lot of this thing that comes out of Reddit reminds me a lot of the South Park rabble, rabble, right. rabble, 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 rabble. It's like people get offended before they really think it through i i was following that reddit thread from the the instant it was created yeah. and for a while it was labeled misleading because yeah yeah and for a while it it was um i don't want to attribute this to any um bad situations or call it out by name but we did it reddit do you remember that whole thing oh, without yeah. saying what the situ right yeah um and and it was the always sunny meme like <laughs> the, the, the strings and posters the, the, on the, the wall the Pepe maps Sylvia. And... it's Pepe Sylvia Pepe yeah. Sylvia <laughs> I figured it out <laughs> yeah. that's what was going on last night and people are so so quick to want to point a finger at any kind of blame that can go around any kind of blame that can go around right now that they are willing to crucify any company for selling four graphics cards on eBay because of an inventory error. What is more likely that in that MSI wanted to deplete their entire global market share and double their profit revenue of RTX 3000 series cards, which we know they don't have very many RTX 3000 series cards. So what would it do? 20 grand this quarter? What's more likely that that's what they were looking at, which means you fire a part-time janitor <laughs> um not even that you I think janitors stop, make more than that you, you stop buying coffee for the corporate office for That's a month and a half probably more what it is yeah like like this is i i don't even want to call it pocket change because that gives it way too much dignity $20, it's a round, rounding to, error almost it's, yeah it's a it's a bank error in your favor collect five dollars in monopoly yeah that's what that is or did they make a mistake and sell four graphics cards on eBay and everyone is upset because the graphics cards on aren't, aren't on shelves right now? Yeah, that's, that's the problem. exactly what it is. So please, my fans, my viewers, my hive mind, be good. Be a good hive mind, please. <laughs> I'm begging you. Uh, well, what about the disparity of the Titan 12 gig in ViewPerf performance and CAD performance? Are you talking between the Titan and the 3090? Um, that could be a number of different things. It may not be uh, aware enough of Ampere yet. There's also some uh, memory bandwidth limitations, I believe. Uh, even though uh, GDDR6X versus uh, GDDR6 on the, the RTX Titan, um, there's still some things and... and uh, uh, workflow and silicon pathways. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there he goes. My pathways were not connecting to the correct word, and I completely lost my word. Uh, 
there are still more efficient pathways on some Titan cards for certain workloads uh, that are just more efficient on Titan cards still. Now, I think we're seeing more of a bridged gap. And finally, they're calling what is the Titan card a GeForce card. And it's actually a GeForce RTX card instead of a, well, Titan XP isn't a gaming card. BS, you have a Star Wars limited edition of it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's call it what it is. I mean, I still no like No one's the... buying that for their workstation. No, no. It's a cool looking card, though, that was. It's still, I wonder how much they're selling those things for now. Not that I need one, but I think they're, um, I think they're cool. I think they're still up there because you can't buy something faster than yes, it yet. Yes, I know, I know. That's true. That's the problem. Yeah. It's supply. But that it's was the ten. That was the. That was the. Uh, that was the. Uh, not the Ampere, but uh, what was the? That was Pascal. Pascal, yeah, that was Pascal, yeah. wasn't it? Yep. Yeah, that was the eleven gig uh, Titan X little P. Yes, that's right. Before it was the Titan X Maxwell, which was just the Titan X, and then they also had the Titan X, which was the Pascal core, and we official, uh, unofficially named it the Titan XP, but we did it capital X, capital P, and then NVIDIA went, oh, we should probably name it something different. Tell you what, we'll give a, we'll release a new model that has like 30 more CUDA cores, and we'll call it the Titan X little P. <laughs> Figure that one out. Yeah. Yeah. Naming conventions. I'd like to figure out, I'd like to just listen to the marketing behind the reasons for like, I think what they do, I don't think there's any thought into it whatsoever. They just have like a dartboard with the alphabet and they all go out for drinks and they just like throw and right. they're like, oh, look at that. And it's always got an X on it because they're always drunk and the X is at the bottom and they just yeah. like, and it just hits the X. That They're Cyril playing darts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um no they're they're all named off past electrical engineers so you've had uh maxwell pascal turing ampere well those are the code uh, names i'm talking about right i'm talking but, about but the... no the 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 x little p that's because yes. it was the pascal core it was the oh i see i see yeah, yeah. and so it's, it's always been based off the name of the gpu die itself okay i got gotcha. um and so right now they they just announced the rtx um a1 a100 which is the mm. the ampere based uh compute card with like 48 gigs of hbm and, and stuff mm -hmm. like that um, it's because it's the ampere based 100 RTX card. Mm -hmm. There's uh, before this it was the it was the T100. Before that it was the P100 because it was Turing, Pascal, Maxwell, mm -hmm. etc. Um, my my Tesla cards. It was the Tesla M6. It was the te Tesla Maxwell. Maxwell six, six yeah. Right. Um, so, uh, what do I think about them canceling the Quadro and te and Tesla name? Well, they canceled the Tesla name because they are in a joint venture with Tesla to develop self-driving technology using NVIDIA Tesla technology. So that makes, that keep, makes sense. Yeah. So trying to keep that straight from an industry standpoint and a regulatory standpoint, that's why they canceled uh, that the sense. Tesla That name. makes sense, yeah. They said, you guys can have the Tesla name, even though NVIDIA technically had it first, but when you start working together, it becomes a little confusing. Wait, is that yeah. our Tesla or their Tesla? And at this point, from a consumer standpoint, the, the Tesla, Tesla inside the Tesla, Tesla or the Tesla Tesla? The Tesla cars are going to be a little more consumer friendly, what most people are going to be familiar with, even right. though the Tesla card was before that. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm going to close my door real quick. Yeah. Oh, we have a super chat from Big Big Spoon we haven't talked about. Uh, so plan to get two 390s, even if they're inflated to $4,500. Big Big Spoon has got a lot of spending cash, if that's the case. Yep. Uh, someone asked earlier, way, way early in the chat, uh, should I get two 3070s or a 3090? Uh, they don't SLI anymore, and SLI is dead, so 3090. Yeah. yeah. There's no reason to buy two cards unless you're going to put them in two machines. I've, I've never, I've never, I was never sold on the SLI technology to begin with. Um, I've, I've gone back and forth with it so many times over the yeah. years, both SLI and Crossfire. Mm -hmm. um, I've had a number of different personal rigs uh, that have had multiple GPUs in them. Um, and uh, I think I've talked about this on the show. My last full-time dual GPU rig was a dual RX 480 because I, <coughs> I was doing a lot of stuff with VR. Mm -hmm. And AMD had promised uh, in their presentation, and they were harping on this thing, their liquid VR technology, which was simultaneous GPU rendering per eye. 
Right. And so one GPU would render your left eye and the other GPU would render your right eye. Right. And because the game is just going to load the frame buffer or the, the, the assets into the RAM of the cards and the cards just have to share the memory, they're going to be rendering the same thing anyway. So why not just render at the same time? Yep. And they said the SDK and API are, are as such that any engine will support this plug and play. No engine ever supported it. <laughs> Nothing. So it there was is, a waste, waste of time. There has not been a single retail game that has used Liquid VR as a tech. Not one. But but they had promised this uh, late phase Oculus DK2 right before the CB1 and the and the the, the uh, HTC5 were coming out. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I I want I don't need like massive 4K gaming. Um, and, and a GTX 1080 was, right. you know, $600, but I can get a couple RX 480s for 200 bucks a piece. Yeah. And for a VR standpoint from that kind that of workload, like that seems like it'd be very efficient. So much more yeah. sense. Right. Um, and you get, you still get the eight gigs of memory. And so for, for some of the other stuff that I was doing, it made sense from a workstation standpoint. Um, and so I fully bought into that and I water cooled them and everything. And I ended up playing on one GPU the entire time. <laughs> Oh, and so eventually I yeah. sold them and, uh, and, yeah. and bit the bullet and bought a, a yeah. GTX 1080. And that, but... that's the same reason why I never went like SLI or Crossfire because like the hype never never lived up to reality. Oh, when it was good, it was good. Oh, no. I, 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 I've known people who had the, the and, and a specific game in a specific situation. It was great. Uh, but uh, Spoon, $2 donation thought. NVIDIA confirmed 3090 SLI. 3090 has SLI. 3080, 3070 do not. So should I buy two 3070s or one 3090? Well, unless you're putting them in two different computers, you can't SLI a 3070. That's what I was yeah. saying. So, yeah. Is everyone good now? Did you like the new red alert? Uh, we we've I guess I've read a lot of positive feedback on the rant alert. Good. Rant rent alert. Red yeah. alert, yes. I, I saw a couple of LOLs, but then I was focused on the rant. So I Yes, I, I know. <laughs> um so I actually want to create um a couple of different things. Um uh one, uh I have a hotkey on my side of things. I wanna create something where you could trigger a red alert too. So and we we're not allowed to trigger it for ourselves, mm -hmm. but we trigger it for the other person. So if I if like we're talking and whatnot, we're we're jabbering along, and all of a sudden like I start going off, you can go oh, and and just set it off. Yeah, that's what I want. And, a, uh, a yellow alert maybe? I don't know. Uh, I I thought about doing a yellow alert as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. An inaudible yellow alert will just change the border and see if anyone notices. Yeah. Um. But uh. And then and then we can also go to red alert. Um. But uh, so I want to be able to trigger it for each other mm -hmm. um, or maybe like half the screen. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the other thing that I want to do is I thought about trying to get some like super chat integration plugin to like trigger uh -huh. it inside my OBS. Because I know you can trigger super can, chat yeah. things for, for OBS. I want, I, I'd like like a, if we start ranting like a $10 donation, you can trigger a red alert. And, it, and it'll last for 60 seconds or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> $20 donation, set it off, do it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds okay. Yep. Or, you know. $5 so for a yellow, $10 for, a, for, or, you know, $10 for a yellow, $20 for a red. All right. Maybe $50 will have a scanty clad wharf dancing across and, the screen. Uh, so, by the way, I hope everyone noticed my, my little bit revamped uh, frame that we have around us. So, it's this exact same layout. But I don't know if anyone noticed it's a lot sharper and the colors are, uh, they're not more vibrant, but I took out all the the compression that was in them because I recycled so many times and upscaled and downscaled and whatnot. We just, I just had JPEG artifacts all over the place. It was fine for most things, but it was starting to bug me. Um, so I completely redid the thing uh, inside of Photoshop today. All of the text was already pre-rendered, and so it was looking pretty garbled. And so now all of these text boxes are actually text boxes. I can type inside of them and customize them all. So they're all customized now. Um, but uh, I thought about getting a rant counter uh, that we could put in mm -hmm. between the two of us. Um, uh, especially useful when Rhett is on the show. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I... This is what happens when Jeff doesn't sleep. That's exactly right, Skull. 
<laughs> these are the things that keep me up at night. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I know I've thought about different ways since we're going to be like this for a while. Might as well have some more fun with it. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I like it. It's got some good stuff. I mean, you could even hook it up with with, uh, you know, some super chats or something like that. Maybe codes will change based on uh, a certain donation or something. Yeah, so some people are starting to break the code, not that they're looking at the numbers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love the user. Yeah, they saw the new usernames. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, all of our usernames are in there. Uh, Hops and Bruises is in there. Talking Heads is in there. Yeah. Yeah, so had them all fun. Uh, but I, I want to do something like, uh, like maybe one of the buttons is for the current high super chat or something like that. You can get your username up there. Yeah. Um, or some, some kind of additive bonus that we can do for stuff like that. Uh, cause I have all the lines on the bottom that I could, uh, do for super chat stuff. Um, I've also got the, the couple of boxes in the middle that are still blank. So mm -hmm. yeah. Eight six seven five three zero nine. Yeah, someone finally found that one. Eight six seven five three zero nine. Hundred dollars trigger shots. Um, I actually a <laughs> uh, hundred dollar or donations to incite alcoholic consumption is against YouTube terms of service. Yeah. Um, and I've, plus, and plus, all I have right now is like some uh, coconut rum. Right. Ah, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> yeah, my, my bar is dwindling, man. I know. My I have I have way more beer than I have like yeah. just straight up alcohol. Um, Mike uh, sent a question. Dollar ninety nine. Uh, do you prefer AMD or NVIDIA GPUs, and which AIB? Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, I get asked so many questions on what I prefer. Are you a Windows guy? Are you a Mac guy? Are you a Linux guy? Are you an NVIDIA guy? Are you an MSI guy? Are you AMD, Intel, blah, 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 blah. What do you like? Tell me what I should love. Um, I use, everything that I do and everything that I use are tools. And there are different tools for different jobs. And that's how I approach all of my reviews. Um, and it's the reason why I don't give a lot of negative reviews. And it's the reason that I always approach something with a not necessarily a hypercritical eye, but if I were to go out and buy this, how would I use it and would I be satisfied? That's how I approach my reviews. Is it highly technical? No. Are the hardcore overclockers going to love my reviews? No. Have I already been called a shill for NZXT? Yes. They sent me a motherboard. <laughs> like, I, I, and I liked the motherboard. It was good. It looks nice. And, I like and, it. And all I have in, in the comments is um, you didn't take apart the VRM. You know it has a 12 plus 4 phase VRM. Blah, blah, blah. Number one, that's not more my passions at. My passions for building. And, uh, and, I like building quiet computers that are very efficient. I, I'm i not all about the balls to the wall overclocking scene. That's never been my scene. If I can if I can add 300 megahertz with no penalty, I'm more than happy to do that, you know, every single day of the week and twice on Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not the kind of guy that lives on the bleeding edge of performance and stability because right. I've always approached these as tools for work or tools for gaming. And I want my tools to work. I don't want to have to work to make my tools yeah. work. You don't want unstableness in your workflow. That's right. like something to completely avoid. Right. Um, so a long way of answering your question, I don't have any brand preferences or brand loyalty or I like this over this. Um, both of my computers right now that I use every single day to produce videos are MSI motherboards and NVIDIA graphics cards. One of them's an X299, one of them's a Threadripper. Yep. Um, and so both of them are enthusiast platforms, although I'm really heavily considering putting the uh, the 10850K in replacement of my streaming PC because, well, X299 is a pretty buggy platform. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, I haven't been overly thrilled with the stability of this machine at stock clocks for what at one point was a $700 processor in the 7850, or 7820X. Um, you know, it just hasn't done what it, I've... In the, in, the, in the PC peripheral market, it's it's kind of unique because just people that I know, I mean, this is anecdotal, of course, 
but they are the most people that I know have been the least brand loyal that I know of. It's like no. they usually just because they're very analytical, they usually look up to see what's the best cost to performance ratio, depending regardless of the brand. Part yeah, is how like, I do. Yes, yeah. Like, it's like okay, well, some yeah, this ASUS board worked great, but next time I might get an MSI board because it reviews better. I don't know. They don't really care. You know what? You know what? This time around, ASUS has a one X slot beneath an X sixteen slot, and and I need to put a card in there, and it's going to be double height, or it's going to block the fan. That yeah. layout doesn't work for me. Yeah, exactly. And and I've said this before, as far as motherboards. Do you know every single motherboard that says whatever chipset on it, X299, TR4, Z, mm -hmm. if it says that chipset and whatever CPU you plug into it is compatible with that chipset, it'll run that CPU at max speed. Mm -hmm. Every single board on the market, every single one, yep. doesn't matter. This will is, you, yep. will you get the same overclock on one board versus another? No, sometimes you'll get a variance of a couple hundred megahertz. But you know what? It'll run at the fastest speeds out of the box that you're supposed to be getting. Yeah. And that's yeah. how I review things. Yeah. Now, if there's a problem, I report it. I remember I did a motherboard review for Modern Zinc on a uh, on a BioStar board. Yeah. And uh, out of the box, they applied a uh, a plus two point five to the base clock. Mm -hmm. Um. And and this was a B three hundred and sixty board, and they did that so they could get a little bit more speed out of the twenty six sixty six RAM. So the RAM was running at like twenty seven eighty or something like that. Um, and the CPU, instead of running at, uh, I think I was testing it with like an i5 uh, 8400, it, instead of running at 2.9, it was running at 3.05. I went, well, that's really weird and, and whatnot. But if you've applied XMP to your RAM, the system became unstable because out of the box, they applied a 2.5% increase to the yeah. base clock. Yeah. And so for me, that motherboard got a totally negative review because it was unstable at the speeds it was supposed to run at stock. Yeah. That's it. And it's, and it's, and it's also, it's an exhausting thing is, I don't know, because uh, well, probably not so much. 3950X I, on I, A520 I, confirmed. Yes. I, you can run a, a 3950X on any A520 motherboard. And yeah. you know what? It's not going to catch fire. <laughs> the world will not come crumbling down around you. The sun's corona will still be intact when you wake up tomorrow morning. I can't guarantee that. That one's out of my Well, control, it but. depends. Uh, the last couple of weeks, sometimes we woke up and there was no corona. There was no right. sun sometimes. I don't we know. What did up. you have for, for November, Bingo? Uh, well, it's still October. Uh, it's, it's I know. October. I'm looking ahead. Uh, November, I think I'm going to go with um, a Super Volcano. Super Volcano? Yeah. Boy, that's been, that's been in my tarot card deck for a long time. <laughs> I mean, it might not be the the Yellowstone super volcano, but she's now a super volcano. Right. Be something. Uh, Parker, twenty dollars donation. Wouldn't be a, a live show without me donating. Yes, I know I've missed a couple. Love the show and glad the Yesen went to a good cause. Thank you so much for that. Again, uh, number one, thank you for the twenty dollars donation. Uh, I really, uh, really, sincerely appreciate it. And uh, yeah, uh, Parker was the one who donated the uh, the Yesen RX five fifty for the video that no one watched, and they said we don't watch your channel, so you can play around with cheap stuff. Do more network. Dance, monkey. <laughs> that was literally half the comments on that video. Oh, uh, that's, that's a shame. Like, it was a fun video. Right. <laughs> it was a lot of oh, fun. Whatever. Oh, whatever. <laughs> Yet you're still subscribed to Low Spec Gamer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, come on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's how I approach uh, reviews. And it's always been how I approached reviews. Yeah. And so a lot of products... Unless unless I don't see how I could use the product or I don't think it's worth the asking price or or it has just straight up usability issues. Yeah. Um, I, I've said this for, um, uh, I also ran a, a deep cool case through the ringer uh, because the layout was some of the stupidest things I had ever seen. Yeah. And I, and I said, it looks really pretty. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's about all I can say for it. Um, I'm also not one who reviews a lot of cases for like, massive amounts of airflow yeah and and i'm chasing that nth percentile for because <laughs> and that's and that's why if it's going to overheat my system if if my system all of a sudden goes from 80 to 100 degrees that's a problem yeah. if it goes from 80 to 86 but it's the case that i like and has the right features yeah. it's still a good case 
And and one of the things because I and don't you know have... what it's quieter because not all the fans are exposed directly to the outside. There's a glass panel between you and it, which is a sound insulator. <laughs> <laughs> there's two sides to every coin. Oh yeah. Sometimes there's, there's, they're stupid, there's, and there's but so they're many, there. There's so many mitigating factors, right. and and it and it's different from generation to generation. And that's why I'm saying like brand loyalty is is mm -hmm. a thing you shouldn't adhere to, especially when it comes to you know PC parts and PC peripherals and everything like that. So it's always, you know, frustrating for me because when I have friends who are not really in tune with this type of thing, they'll come and they'll ask me, it's like, oh, I need to go buy a new hard drive. What brand do you recommend? And I'm like, uh, let me, or what motherboard do you recommend? What router right. do you recommend? I'm like, I, I mean, I don't um, know. I bought one that I thought was pretty good, but this is like, that was three years ago. I don't know what they got now. Let me, let me do like five hours of research and let me get back to you. Right. You know? Um, yeah. Say... Yeah, it, what what brand of of, uh, of of hard drive should I buy? I heard Seagate was really bad, or I heard HDST yeah. oh, yeah. was really bad, or yeah. I heard Western Digital was really, really bad. bad. It's like, well, yeah, well, every what single did you one hear? of those, every single one of those probably had drives that failed, but a lot of them have very good drives too. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just it really depends, and you right. really have to do your research. I, I've had, um, I had at one point with one of my clients, a cluster of Western Digital Enterprise drives. Mm -hmm. um, how many drives were in that stack? Gosh. They were a bunch of, uh, they were a bunch of 500 uh, gig drives, uh, 500 gig Enterprise, so uh, WD Blacks with the yellow stripe, which is their enterprise branding of their right. of their WD Blacks. Um, they were 500 gig drives, and we also had some two terabytes, and we also had a bunch of WD Black two terabytes. Um, gosh, there were probably 60 drives in that entire stack. Mm -hmm. Over a six-year lifespan, I replaced three. Oh, wow. That's... Three. That's not bad. But all of a sudden, because Western Digital had bad marketing and 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 honestly named their drives incorrectly, naming them mm -hmm. REDs, which should be RAID capable for any system, right. with SMR drives... They lost a little bit of credibility and we need to check whether or not the drives they're selling now are SMR and, and whatnot. Um, but all of a sudden I'm hearing, well, Western drives are terrible for servers. You should never use those. No. Well, Do you know what you're talking about? <laughs> that's not the case at all. There were there were like six drive models that were affected by that. Yeah. Yeah. So are they still a good company? Yeah, they're still a good company. They yeah. made a mistake and it was one they shouldn't have made, but, but I'm not ready that doesn't, to... That doesn't mean you throw everything out. I'm not ready to throw their head on a pike and never yeah. let them into the port again. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> and 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 again, it's it's. Uh, I had comments on on the NZXT video today. Uh, you know, uh, I I'll never buy the uh, an NZXT motherboard as long as they use ECS as their as their OEM. Okay, well, this one was made by ASRock, so is that better? Yeah. You know, like yeah, I've I know some, ECS is great. I've had some ASRock motherboards that were great. I've had some. I've seen some people who had absolutely abysmal. Uh, right. experiences with ASRock. ECS, so. ECS does have a bad name as far as longevity goes. Um, but... <laughs> I haven't heard of a spate of, of NZXT boards failing. I know they were really expensive for the feature set that they offered, yeah. and they were... The, their first couple of generations were probably a little bit inexpensive as far as parts goes, mm. and they were also $350, so they were competing Oof. with more of a boutique yeah. Uh, yeah. board. Yeah. This one was 229 and made by Azrock. What am I supposed to say about it? Yeah. It had virtually identical feature sets with a lot of other things. The look set it apart from a lot of things on the market because the looks of the was complete the primary armor plating. Thing, yeah. Yeah. Um, it has uh, two built-in NZX2 Hue's, Hue RGB hubs. So anything you want to integrate with any of other NZXT's infrastructure is already mm -hmm. there. It's no mm -hmm. extra cost. Um, and then there's people going, I would never buy that piece of garbage. Okay, you that's do the, you, bro. That's fine. Don't don't right. don't, don't do it. <laughs> right. This this um, video is here for information purposes, and eh, maybe that's right. not for you. That's fine. And 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 again, there are there are people whose entire livelihoods is telling you how many layers the PCB has to it, and what the exact power delivery is, and mm -hmm. and whatnot. And those are good videos and good reviews and and whatnot. But the that's not what I do. Yeah. I I'm a usability, and I'm a um, how would I use this in a build? Can I use this in a build? Does it fit this exact use case or a use case that I want to apply it to? Mm -hmm. um, 
I I try to give I, I call it real world results. Yeah. But I I really I really strive for that in every one of my reviews. How would I, as a consumer who right. would go out and spend two hundred and twenty nine dollars on X product, how would I use this in my office here? Yeah. I approach every single review that way. Mm -hmm. And price point is a major factor. Um, of course, there's also times when price point is not a major factor. If you want the best graphics card, it's the RTX 3090. Well, it's not the best value. I didn't say it's the best value. It's it the best the card. the fastest graphics card yeah. that has ever been yeah. made on this planet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's going up to, you. to be it's up expensive. To you. It's up to you to figure out if, if you want to go that far. Right. Yeah. The craft computing, you've been angry the last few weeks. Well, there's a lot of people <laughs> pissing me off. <laughs> Um, everyone's on edge. Yeah. This has been a weird year. My, Mike wants to clarify. Clarify from before. I agree. I don't hey, have a preference. Hey, gear seekers. Hey, uh, guys. <laughs> <laughs> These videos are how I fall asleep. <laughs> oh, that's good. I'm glad we could put you all to sleep. I, I, uh, how's, how's everything going down there south? Hope, I know you guys aren't on fire anymore, but I, I want to make sure everything's still good because we were on fire last month. So so our, our September was your guys' January. I just want to make sure everything's still cool or are you on to the next level of plague? <laughs> <laughs> so how's everything going with you guys? Um, oh, and belated congrats on 100K because they, they crossed 100K a month ago, three weeks ago, something like that. So Gear Seekers? Yeah, Gear Seekers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How did you get a check mark? What the crap? Where's my... Yeah, I still don't have a check mark. On Twitter? Was it, a, was it 100K or was it 200K? Gosh, where... Or on, on YouTube. YouTube. Oh. Or Twitter. Twitter I've given up hope on. Oh, I know. Their certification on there is really weird. Right. Yeah, they passed 100K. Uh, like three weeks ago, four weeks ago, something like that. Hmm. Let me see. <laughs> says yeah we're good we filmed a video about the n7 today and directed everyone to your review <laughs> <laughs> see and 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 i like doing usability videos because that's that's often a lost art especially when you get into the higher tiers of reviews like i'm not going to go and x-ray my board and tell you every last trace that's on it that's not my <laughs> review there are other people who will do that there's buildzoid who will break down every last uh i did apply for it i and here's the frustrating thing is, um, I don't know if, if you guys remember, I applied for the check mark multiple times, but the month that I crossed the 100K is the month that YouTube said, we're not gonna do the check mark anymore unless like we individually approve it and we're only gonna do it for like celebrities and talk shows. Um, and there was this huge uproar of like, okay, but what about this guy who has 5 million subscribers on your platform and built those 5 million subscribers on your platform? Can he have a check mark? Well, yeah, I guess we'll keep those. Well, what about the guy who has 100K in a niche market? Can he still have a check mark? Okay, we'll reverse the whole policy. I crossed during that time and they've mm -hmm. never acknowledged, I got my plaque, but they won't give me a check mark because I crossed during the, that time lapse that they were doing away with that system. And so I'm gonna, you couldn't I'm apply. I'm going to start a campaign to get John a check mark before you do with his like 600, 700 subscribers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll just ply whoever is in charge with giving out the check marks with cases of beer. And, and, <laughs> there you uh, go. Um, but yeah, there, there are so many outlets that can focus on different things. And I like to think of mine as a usability. Now, as far as network things, I'll, I'll tear other YouTubers a, a new one, you know, uh, I'm not gonna name any names. <laughs> I I can terminate a Cat6 cable on my own and have it certified. I can, I, I yeah, I applied for it on, Oct on, on the 3rd of October and got it the next day. Oh, come on. I've had mine for a year and four months. <laughs> I've applied four times and I cannot get a check mark. What the hell? Is this the real craft computing? I don't see the check mark. You know what? Unsubscribe. Yeah. I'm done with you, Novella Hub. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go mail your beer to Jason. <laughs> Gotta shake it up first though. Should start posting videos with the check mark emoji in front of me. <laughs> it's exactly what I should do. Uh, suddenly it's group time. Thank you all. I no longer have to see a therapist. <laughs> Yeah, Kraft doesn't need to have a network guy. Yeah, I am the network guy. Y y you know when you uh, 
do a command in, in Linux and it says, uh, you know, you uh, you are not in Sudor's group. This incident has been reported. I am the administrator. I am. <laughs> I'm the one who knocks. Yeah. So. Oh, nine fifty. We still got. We still got, still got one more beer. Yeah. Got one more beer. Uh, still I, I'm almost yet. done with this one. I, oh, all right. I've been gonna, ranting. I know. Well, I figured your mouth would be dry after all that ranting. There you go. <laughs> That's going to be a really fun hotkey. <laughs> That's going to be great. You should change the name to Checkmark Computing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But no, I've watched videos from a lot of different YouTubers when they're mm. uh, from the consumer side of things, when they're trying to start venturing into the networking and um, and so on and so forth. And uh, boy, I don't know how to how to use a a, a crimper, so I'm going to buy like. 300 feet of pre-terminated cable, but they would only sell it to me 100 feet at a time. I don't know Oof. why. I don't know <laughs> why. And so I just bought these couplers and I'm going to run power over ethernet through my attic with those. That was that was one example. There's hey. there's the... Uh, I'll, call, I'll call Linus out because he knows he was an idiot at the time. At, at least now he does. But when Wanak died, when he had uh, three raid... F- or three raid five striped into another raid five with SSDs because he was trying to beat the speed to performance or the, the speed to storage curve with SSDs. And then two of his arrays failed simultaneously. Oof. <laughs> yeah. So at least the beer made it to you, Jeff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. So I'll call Linus out for, for not knowing what he's doing as far as storage goes and, and sometimes with networking and, yeah. Not his forte, but he should have enough people on his staff that should know it right now. Should. 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 Yeah. I think it's better now. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, this next month I'm going to dive into doing VLANs and, and uh, you know, uh, gosh, now my, and now I can't think of the names that I want to use for things. Man, I worked <laughs> in a data center for years doing crazy deployments and I'm even still scared to go down the server route with videos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, the only reason I do it is because I spent 13 years doing it and, and I am good enough at it. And I only venture into the things that I have at least a well above average knowledge of. I don't like, I I don't know that I'll ever dive into a PF sense video. Hey, set up PF sense on your, because the PF sense fanatics out there are even more ruthless than the standard Linux fanboys who mm. are even more ruthless than the Intel versus AMD versus Nvidia fanboys. Like you, you venture into a realm from whence there is no return. Um, you don't want to go down uh, that rabbit hole. I don't want to go down that rabbit hole because I can set up PF sense and I can run it as a home user. And I know the networking steps to to route traffic and set up vlans and and segregate traffic and you know uh all that kind of stuff i i know that but i also had a network guy who handled layer three routing for me Mm -hmm. i my 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 knowledge base ends at complex layer two (laughs) and, and entry level layer three i know that's where i stop and so i'm not going to proclaim that i'm an expert in the subject by going here's how you set up pf sense for every situation yeah I don't even want to do it for home because I don't want to get the more advanced questions. Um, and God forbid I get something wrong, you know. On video. Right. Yeah, I'm going to get called out. <laughs> so, yeah, PFSense is really cool. I've I've ran PFSense for a number of years at my house before I decided to stop fiddling with it and just go uh, with Unify. But Unify has its, its disadvantages as well. And... Um, as soon as I did a, a, a literally an unboxing video on putting the, the UDM into my rack and here's the basic feature set, I got told, number one, I don't know what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. I got told, that thing is an absolute piece of garbage. Why are you even going that route? All I did was plug it in. I didn't tell you how to set it up. I haven't done a full review yet. I said I'm waiting a, at least a couple of weeks to do a full review because I want to start using it first. Yeah. But here's a bit of content to keep you waiting. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, yeah, my 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 comments were filled with hate towards that device. But again, from 
my individual use case. Mm -hmm. I'm going to review it from my individual use case and tell right. you from my perspective, is this worth the $389 asking price or should you go another route? It doesn't do multiple WANs. I have one internet service provider in my yeah. area that can deliver more than 20 megs. One. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have redundant WANs. You don't? I thought I've no. rated. No. Let's just go down, go down to the store, and get another one. <laughs> uh, I've been told we forgot to do a super chat. Oh, did I miss one? Uh, yeah, Mike. He wanted to clarify because he was talking about uh, uh, what was the preference, right? Right. Uh, is this to clarify? I agree. Uh, I don't have a preference either, but I'm also not rich. So my current standpoint, and that's why AMD should be more logical to me at this point. That's what he said. Um, you know, there's actually arguments to be made both ways. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's not, I, I have been guilty of this as well. Mm -hmm. AMD's killing it right now. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right now. Absolutely that's that's why I got in every AMD. regard. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's a couple points to be made for some, some Intel chips at this point. Mm -hmm. I don't think anything on the high end. Right. Nothing. It's way, 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 way too exorbitant. Yeah. Um, uh, but, you can find uh, like like my my nephew who is um you know just starting to get he's and when I say high 13. end I'm talking high end desktop and server right 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 I'm I'm talking I'm, beyond consumer scope I'm talking I'm talking oh oh you're talking beyond consumer scope I'm talking consumer scope I mean I recommend it to him because he could probably get much better gaming performance for cheaper with Intel right now than he probably could with AMD for his price range because he's like very young and doesn't have much he can put together. And I'm like saying, you could probably find some really good Intel stuff. Uh, nothing. Go what ahead. I miss? Oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> I was laughing at the BGP comments. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> um, uh, and have I tried, sorry, uh, in between the BGP, uh, Jeff, have I tried? Uh... <laughs> uh, someone asked something the optimist yes i have had the optimist or hemp oh. emperor 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 uh new belgium uh, i don't think i've had that one you haven't had what i think i might have had it. how have you not had that one i uh, left come on i have you seen my my amount of check-ins i have on untapped yes i have way way i think i think uh john might have surpassed me but Hepper by New Belgium. I probably have. Let me go look it up. I, I can't know. imagine you not having tried that one. I probably did. It's by New um, Belgium. Yeah. Anyway, uh, current preferences and where the market currently sits. Um, I can't wait for the next year when um, regionally in the U.S. I'm big enough to start getting just about any sample I need. I'm I'm right there. Like I said, I I'm I'm right on the edge. I'm a little bit. I'm, I'm big enough to get the attention of people within the United States market, but I'm not big enough to get release samples of everything and certainly not big enough for Intel to give one flying F about me. Um, right. That's not entirely true. Uh, Intel did send the 10850K over that was in the NZXT review, which I will be using later on and doing a full deep dive between the, the 10850K and the 3800 XT. That's a video that's coming up here shortly. Uh, selfless shameless plug um not selfless that was self full <laughs> um that was full of self um but uh no you I, sure? don't have, you sh I don't have a full stack of cpus across the entire product line to test but uh what i do know looking at a lot of performance and price to performance specs is there's some compelling things at the bottom of intel stack right now uh the the 10 God. Intel, you need a new naming scheme. I know you're still on the core architecture, but good Lord, just rebrand. Um, <laughs> uh, the 10400 and the 10300 um, are pretty decent price to performance. Um, you're getting, uh, I mean, the, the, I, the i5 8400 was one of my favorite uh, parts at $179. Uh, the i5-10400 is a 6-core, 12-threaded version of that same part, same 2.9 gigahertz and a slightly higher turbo to 4.3 instead of, I think it was a 3.8 on the 8400. Um, but it's not a bad 
part at all. It's not quite as fast as the 3600. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's in that same ballpark. It's a 65 watt part that competes part for part. And if you see an Intel board that you like better, go, go for, for it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's it's not like they're you know the 3600 is the only CPU I'd ever buy. Mm-hmm. The 10400 right. is a pretty decent chip. The the 10300 is a pretty decent chip. The yeah. the i the i5 9400 if you can get it for less than 150 is a great chip. Um, and then looking at chips like the 10850K, um, you get an extra two cores and four threads. Compared yeah. com- now it's eighty five dollars more than the 3800 XT, um, which is a bit steep, and, but and uh, and. But it's also, you know, twenty five percent faster in multi threaded workflow as long as your 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 work supports ten cores. Mm-hmm. And uh, yesterday or a couple days ago, when I was uh, benchmarking the ten eight fifty, I got it up to five point one gigahertz and set my my personal all time single threaded record on Cinebench R fifteen. Oh, nice! It's, it's a quick chip. You know, it it was up there with my eighty seven and ninety nine hundred K. Um, uh, which were also overclocked to the 5.1 gigahertz, shocker. Uh, but it, it got like two points faster. I got a 221 versus a 219 on my 9900K and a 217 on my 8700K. Um, you're not going to go wrong. And then the 3700X was sitting right behind that, I think, at 216. And so price to performance, 3700X um, and, and 3800 XT because that one will boost a little bit higher. But... If you need a couple extra cores and you want a game and you want a chip that's as high as it can be and you got an extra 85 bucks, mm-hmm. 1050K is a good chip. Yeah. And uh, But right now the popular narrative is don't buy Intel, buy only AMD. And like I said, I've it's, been... That's not always the use case. Yeah, that's not always I, the case. I've been almost as guilty of that myself on this channel. And, mm-hmm. and so because you asked that question... I realize I've probably been a little bit disingenuous based on my own review policies because I've said that on this show. I don't think I've said that in a video, but I've said this on this live show. Uh, don't buy Intel, buy AMD. Um, right now, if you want something that performs in graphics, the 5700 XT is a pretty darn good card. I can't wait to see what RDNA turns out in a couple of weeks. Um, but if you want to spend more than $450, $500, NVIDIA is your only choice. Um, you know, if you could get a 3080, God, the price performance has never been better <laughs> oh yeah exactly that's that's why everybody's clamoring for it right 100 percent. um that's but, why there's demand that's why that's people why are pissed dem- off that that's MSI why there's was selling demand. them on ebay yeah there's there's that's why there's demand but there's no supply right. and that's why it's going for way over msrp on ebay and that's why people are getting pissed off mm-hmm. yeah um so yeah uh that was a very very long spurred conversation based off of one simple question yeah and, it's like, and that i have none Everything's a tool. And how does that yep. tool work? I have seven different hammers in my garage. Yeah. And you know what? There's six different functions for those hammers. Sometimes you need a different hammer. Sometimes you need a different drill. Sometimes you need a different this or that. And budget comes into play. And gear sequence, oh, yeah. p- pick the right tool for the job within your budget. <laughs> Thank you. It's almost like I was just saying that exact same thing. Well done. Um, but yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, should we should we finish up? It's already ten o'clock. Should we finish up the last? We have like just two more brief. Yeah, we can get. Yeah. We can get things we can go through. Yeah. Uh, so, Cyberpunk. Uh well, did you want to do beer? We have like one. Oh, that's right. We have one. We have beer one story. beer news. Uh, not anything super crazy. Um. Basically, we got the uh, the beer of the week with the weird beer flavor, but this one I think um, might be a little bit different. I know we've had several beer news items where we had, oh, this is a beer made with rocks, or this is beer beer made with placenta, or some beer made with some weird ingredient, breast milk. And yeah, 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 all kinds of weird stuff like this. Now this whale one, semen. I think this was one is a, one this one is a, this one is a slightly yeah no I think it was a whale testicles. Whale testicles. It right. was actual real one. Right. Um, and I've had beer made with roasted duck. I've had, yep. Yep. I've had I've had all kinds of weird beers. Now this one, I, I think is a different ingredient, but I think it could be a a, a staple in the sense that it could make a, a completely different new beer style. Right. That could actually be good. Um, 
because one of the things, one of the ingredients that people put into beer to kind of give it thickness and body and a little bit more flavor is oats. So right. you put oats in there to give it a little more body, a little more yeah. thickness, a little yeah, more flavor. A, yeah, a, a lot of stouts will have a lot a of lot oats of stouts, in, in the yeah. grain bill. Yep. Um, even some of the thicker IPAs will add some exactly. uh, some oats to it. So this particular one is being put out by Dogfish Head. It's called Hazio, mm -hmm. and they are using oat milk. An oat milk that is derived from, I think, um, I think four different types of oats. So it can have probably a really big body, I suspect, uh, right. because they're using uh, different oats and oat milk. Uh, but it's probably going to have a slightly complex flavor, and uh, it's going to be maybe a lot more creamier because it's you know because oat milk does kind of have a creamy texture to it. Right. And uh, it could be it could be something interesting. Um, I don't know. I'd like to try it myself. Dogfish Head, I think, is gets distributed out here. Yes, it does. So, well, I mean, not all of it, not everything they put out, but right. a lot of the stuff they do. Um, I I may have ways to get some Dogfish Head out here if we can't get it. Yeah, but this would so. be an interesting one to try. I know some peeps. Yes. If not, oh gosh, uh, there's this one place I went Subtle to. Subtle flex. <laughs> when I was when I was in Denver, uh, I don't know if we have any people who are in Denver or live in Denver. There was a place I went to called Tipsy's, and it was uh, basically an alcohol superstore where they had uh, uh, an, a wine section, a beer section, and an alcohol section. And it was like the size of a Safeway, basically. Like it's like like a big supermarket, but it had just everything you can think of in there. I'm now, on board. Yes, it was. It was. Tell quite, me when and where. <laughs> it was quite impressive. Um, now their now their beer selection, I would say, was not as diverse as like say John's Marketplace, like John's we Marketplace, have here. Capital because, Market. Yeah, uh, they they had a lot of their own Colorado beers there, yeah. and um, they had a lot of Northwest beers there too. Uh, but they didn't have a lot of international beers. Uh, their like German beer section was very small. Their uh, Belgian beer section was very small, just yeah. all their standard flair. Um, but man, they also had tons of wine. Their alcohol section, the biggest scotch and uh, whiskey section I've ever seen for a liquor store before. It was mm -hmm. really impressive. I spent like about an hour and a half there just walking around and buying stuff. Yeah. It was pretty neat. Uh, did you have the same experience that I did on the California border where you, you walk around with two bottles in your hands and they go, oh, we'll hold those at the counter for you. And you go, <laughs> I have two free hands. And then I can get some more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had my wife with me, so I had four free hands actually. So. Ooh, nice. No, I actually, I actually broke out a shopping cart. Because, mm -hmm. uh, well, this because this is one of the places that we went to because like I wanted to get some Colorado beers that I couldn't get uh, in Oregon. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, this is a great place to stock up because they have a huge variety, and I have to go drive to all these breweries and stuff like that. So, right. Um, I did buy quite a bit over there. But again, a lot of them were like 16 ounce cans, and I'm just like, oh, that's a lot. That's a lot of liquid to drink by myself. Right. Yeah. I I've been seeing so many bombers that I want to buy, and only the super rare ones am I buying right now. But yeah. I'm letting all the the middle tier ones like go through the cracks. It's like I really want to try that, but I I don't have the stomach right now to drink a 14.5 percent. Right. I know. Stout I need to, on my own. I need to share that with somebody. 29 ounces worth. I know. <laughs> It's it's always nice because that's when we were on the show together and we were always there together. Mm -hmm. We'd get those twenty two ounce bombers, yep. you know, ten eleven percent beer. We split it between ourselves. That's great. That's like the yep. perfect amount. Little crowlers and and kind of things. Yeah, yeah, those were perfect. Always great. Trying to do that by myself. Oof, man. Yep. Oh, that's so hard. Not that I don't enjoy it. It's just ooh, sometimes it's rough. Yep. There there are three legitimately very good tap stations within almost walking distance of my house. Yeah. And uh, like they get good stuff in. Oh yeah, West Side Tap House, which is really yep. close to where you live. Yep. Uh, what did they had? They I saw that they had something that that looked. Oh, they had the the new um, the peanut butter and jelly Yeti, I think. Or no, was it? <sighs> it was it was some kind of Yeti that was there. That uh, I was super disappointed because I went to Great Divide, which Yeti is is one of my favorite like bourbon barrel and barrel aged stouts they they mm -hmm. make, and they had one yeti on tap that was it and it was their worst yeti they ever released that was the chocolate cherry yeti and i was super 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 disappointed oh no 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 a west side tap house has the 
pumpkin yeti pumpkin spice oh. yeti yeah <laughs> that's what it is ocean spray dog face truck was it that's oh, a yeah. waste of hops yeah <laughs> It's about the only time I will be an elitist beer drinker is when you start doing pumpkin spice. Oh, see, that was the thing that, that um, I mean, although, I don't, I don't although, mind the pumpkin although, beers. Although I, I do have an imperial pumpkin cider in my fridge right now. Oh, I think I know who it's by. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know it. who it is. I know it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. So my wife loves pumpkin beer. Yeah. She loves the pumpkin beer. And there was a ton of it in Colorado, too. So about half of the beers I brought back from Denver were pumpkin beers, mm -hmm. which is unfortunate because I'm going to get burned on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't mind them, but ah, that's a lot. That's a um, lot. So I, I went with, because uh, we're doing a show on the 30th, and so I mm -hmm. wanted to make sure I had some Halloween-inspired mm -hmm. beers. Yeah. Um, on the holidays, I like to do the... Yeah, yeah, know, yeah. The, the dress up and whatnot. Yeah. Dress, dress it up, and right? Now. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so I, I have uh, the 2020 Rogue Dead and Deader. Oh, nice. Yes. Um, I've got... What else do I have? I think I got three beers, and they're all pretty big Wait, ones. Wait, you, you have a show on the, on the 30th? I thought you can have... It's the 28th. 28th, excuse me. Yeah. I think that's going to be... So it's John... It's Jimmy John. Yeah, John. Yeah. So, but yeah, so I got I got picked up a Rogue, Rogue Dead and Deader, which is a on their their Rogue Dead Guy ale, but combined with their Rogue the Dead Guy whiskey mm -hmm. and what else? So oh yeah, Dead and Deader. Excellent, good stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's very good stuff. Yeah, yeah. I uh, after two years, I finally finished off the uh, the dead guy whiskey mm -hmm. uh barrel strength bottle that i had oh nice i would like oh, to God. see more halloween fall themed beers that are not pumpkin pumpkin right like you know halloween candy is a thing make right. some beers made with popular halloween candies like give, uh, give me a, give me an apple spice yeah uh, you know apple spice IPA a graph a graph like which that. is a beer cider right. mix right. with some apple pie spices or something so it's kind of like an apple pumpkin or right. maybe like you know a reese's peanut butter cup beer or something well, that's peanut butter stout whatever yeah uh, pumpkin is not a silver bullet yeah it's not i want to see like well there's candy I've, I've seen candy corn beers before there's already a silver bullet in the beer industry and it's terrible too yes that's not very good i did see the i did see the coors <laughs> uh brewery when i was in uh i went to we went to golden uh, we took a drive out to Golden. Did you did you do a pilgrimage there? Uh, no, it was the did only you taste reason. The Rockies while you were there. They they didn't. They were they were actually closed to 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 tourism because yeah. of COVID. Uh, but uh, they did. Uh, they were. They, it's a huge place, and it's a very grim looking from the outside. It looks very uh, communistic, utilitarian type of a building. Big mm -hmm. square cement block, you know, buildings. But candy corn only, stout? I'd try it. Uh, you know what? The thing with candy corn, I actually have uh, a couple of uh, my friend who who brews too. He actually uses candy corn as an adjunct for his beer when he wants to bump up the ABV. Right. So he'll throw candy corn in he there. He introduces a bunch more sugar and that just yeast will eat it up. It, yep. It just eats it up. It's just get, get, just, get a hearty yeast and you'll. Uh... Yep. yep. So yeah. See, I do know more. things about brewing. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not an idiot. I've just never done it myself. Yeah, candy corn, a Vegemite beer. Um, I mean, I don't know, maybe, maybe somebody's done that before. Uh, I can't Ethan imagine says, you probably. Sorry, I want to get to this one. Ethan says, uh, "This was my first Talking Heads. I stayed up to one a.m. just to watch y'all, and I'm glad uh, you like uh, the Hemperer. It's my favorite. Anyways, getting late, and I have to go. Good night. Thank you so much for staying up. And, Hemperer. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, you're not going to regret it tomorrow. But if not, make it a habit. Yeah." <laughs> I, I did look. I did not have the Hemperer. I'll have to go look out for that one. How have you not had the Hemperer? I don't know. I'm not a big uh, – like I said, I'm not a big new Belgian fan. Uh, if yeah. I see a new new Belgian beer, unless someone yeah. unless someone tells me it's very good, I won't seek it out. Yeah, your, your brand loyalty is showing through there. <laughs> well, I <laughs> – I, ha I had one Belgian – one new Belgian beer in like 2007. There, there, I will never no, do another one again. There are some new Belgian – like the, Bel the new Belgian Trippel that they put out, that's pretty good. I actually do like that one. Um, their, uh, voodoo, uh, 1985, I think is very good, but for the most part, a lot of new Belgian beers are just, I'm not a big fan of. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I think Vegemite's got like yeast slurry or something in there. Is that right? I don't know. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, two really quick blurbs. Uh, Cyberpunk 2077 yes. is gold. gold. That's right. Release to manufacturing, as we uh, used to say. Yes. Uh, or when they press CDs. They used um, to, yeah. Yeah. I think you can still get this one. Probably. I mean, physically. well, of course, it's, they're going to do physical copies for consoles, obviously. Right. So uh, I, I don't know if they're going to do a physical copy for PC, but you know what? I should probably look into that. Yeah. Um, I, I know when it's released, I'll be buying it on good old games because I want it DRM free. Anytime anything is on good old games and other platforms, I will always buy it there first. Mm -hmm. I, I like supporting DRM free. Yes, but it's. And it's... obviously, good old games, CD Projekt Red, same thing. Right. So that's <laughs> right. The, so it's gone gold. So the official release date is now November 19th. November 19th. Which is one day before my birthday. So guess what I'm going to get for my birthday? A game that I probably won't play for like a year after. <laughs> oh, on a, on a personal milestone note. I, 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 I thought you were going to say, guess what I'm going to get for my birthday, and then I'm going to buy a game. Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> no, I, I, I surpassed the 3K mark finally. Oh, did you for your Steam my, library? Uh, my Steam library is over 3K now. This wasn't a measuring contest today, Steve. No, no, I know, I know it wasn't. But I just thought I'd, I thought I'd toot my horn a little bit. Okay, what do I have? I'm at eight oh six. Eight oh six, which is respectable. It's respectable, yeah. It's right. respectable. I mean, I've seen some guys that have and not know, nearly as many humble bundles as you. That's true. No, I, I, I've, I've done the humble. Although bundles I do for a have all of the German simulator games. I have all of them. <laughs> oh my god! Like even like log processing simulator or something I, like I that. I have, uh, gosh, what was Shipping and Logistics Simulator? Yeah, I've seen that one before. Driving a yeah. forklift around? Right. Yes, yes. That's I a know. horrible game. Oh, I know. I know. Those are horrible. <laughs> there's the one that I had but that I so actually... it's so much fun just to goof around in them. There's one that I had that I actually played quite a bit of. It was one of those German simulators that I played. Oh, it was, it was uh, Giant giant Machines or something? Giant Machines yeah. Simulator? Yeah. That one? Yeah. Because my son loved like driving around in the and, giant. And sorry, the shipping and logistics simulator. You start off by driving a pallet jack around, and then you graduate to the forklift, and then eventually you graduate to like conveyors and stuff. <laughs> but you it's have like to working, figure out how to. It's like working a second job. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. But you you start out in like a supermarket where you have to like like a Safeway slash Costco, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where your job is to walk into the back room and pick up a pallet of things and bring them to the floor. That's, yeah, that's the start of the game. Right. I, I'm literally doing a second job for fun because oh, it's a game. Yep. <laughs> That's the point of the game is to work. <laughs> Just think of the guy who actually does that and then bought the game and then started playing it. <laughs> it's like, ah, oh, this is pretty good. I yeah. like this. <laughs> oh, Novella Hub, 10 bucks. Novella Hub, $10. Uh, here's to uh, help you get a check mark. You know, I, I think I will take advantage of that. I'll uh, I'll personally walk up to uh, YouTube CEO Susan and go, hey Susan, you know, uh, I could really use a check mark, you know, ten dollars. There you make go. Make that happen. No, no, no. You have to like you have to put it in the palm of your hand, and then you go out to shake yeah. her hand, and then you kind of right. like kind of snake it in there. Yeah, but how do you do that socially distanced? Uh, you put it in a plastic bag. Okay. Put your hand in a plastic bag. <laughs> glove up first. Yeah, glove up first. Yeah. Yeah. Come in, a, come in a hazmat suit. Got, got a glove maybe. up for those $100 hand Yeah, now. exactly. <laughs> and finally, Baldur's Gate 3 has uh, entered early access. So, That's right. Uh, you uh, want to enjoy pushing people off Ledges Simulator? Here is your chance to get in That's on right. that. And uh, I would love to go in depth a little bit more about Baldur's Gate 3 and all the fun times that I had with that growing up. But I think we will save that and more German Simulator talk for the after show over That's on exactly. Discord. Exactly, yeah. Uh, so thank you guys so much for joining us here on episode 153 of Talking Heads. Our once week live show of the latest in beer and tech news. Join us every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Or catch us on podcasts at Anchor FM or wherever your favorite podcasts are found. Uh, if you want to join the after show, you have to get uh, be a part of the Patreon. Link is down in the video description. Minimum donation of $1 per month gets you access. And... Uh, Join the ever-growing community of people over there and uh, get part of the fun. Yeah, it's not even coffee money. Come on, it's super cheap. Right. So, 
uh yeah join us on over there uh hope to see you here in a couple of minutes after steve and i go take care of our usual <laughs> i'm we not just drink i'm a couple not like of beers aching and... is bad before so the, right. the the strategy of doing just 12 ounces yeah uh per per drink is is paying off yeah, in no, dividends I'm, I'm, do, I'm doing pretty well i'm i'm, I'm pretty I'm good holding too. on there yeah um, I can I can usually make it through a football game, which is two and a half hours. So, yeah. you know, I'm doing all right. Yeah. Um, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, we'll see you next week. See you guys. Cheers, all. Mm-hmm.